You're two and zero, man. Nobody else is undefeated in the Big East. Keep it that way. The bullseye gets bigger. Okay, but remember what we talked about all this week. We control our own destiny. We control our own destiny. Connecticut head coach Randy Etzel knows the stakes are different now. He's got this program where it's never been before. Ranked in the top 25 and today taking on a top 10 team in South Florida. And we welcome you to ESPN College Football here on ABC, presented by Best Buy. A little bit of everything today in East Hartford at Rentschler Field. We've got rain, we've got clouds, we've got wind. All of those will play into this game today. Number 10, South Florida, taking on number 23, UConn. And here is what's at stake in terms of the Big East. UConn, <laughs> midway through the season, the only undefeated team in conference play West Virginia with the win just a moment ago on ABC over Rutgers. South Florida can move to two and one and be tied for first with a victory this afternoon here against UConn. Terry Gannon along with David Norrie. Quint Kesnick joins us in a little bit. Take you back six years and UConn wasn't even playing Division 1A football. Take you back 11 years. South Florida wasn't even playing football at all. And you look right now, number 10 against number 23. It's pretty amazing, David, and, and kind of a blueprint for what's taking place uh, and what you can do in college football today. Well, and you look at all the big name teams now in the Big East. You got a Louisville, you got a Rutgers out there, West Virginia playing so well. It's amazing to see Connecticut undefeated and atop the Big East right now. And then South Florida, last week going into the Rutgers game, they're number two in the country. A lot of experts thought they should have been number one in the country. It really says a lot about this conference. I don't know that you want to be number two. October <laughs> certainly not a good month for the number twos in the poll. Uh, what about the two quarterbacks, though? Matt Grothy, certainly people around the country getting to know him. Less so for Tyler Lorenzen. Well, Terry, I believe there are two types of quarterbacks. The quarterback that you ask to go out and win the game for you and the quarterback that you ask to go out and not lose the game for you. For South Florida, Matt Grothy, he's the type of quarterback where you put the game on his shoulders. I think he's one of the top playmakers in the country for two straight years as a freshman and a sophomore. He's led this team in rushing and in passing. He's one of the most entertaining quarterbacks to watch across the land and then of course for UConn you have Tyler Lorenzen and Tyler Lorenzen only has three interceptions on the year he's the type of quarterback where you say hey go go out there don't make mistakes we've got plenty of talent on offense we've got a number six ranked team in the country on defense just don't make mistakes don't screw things up and we've got a great shot to win this game. Now, Grothy's got the Growhawk, too, his version of the Mohawk, which you have to like as a quarterback. <laughs> UConn, you can say that every one of these games now may be as big as they've ever played in the history of this program. Certainly in the middle of the three-game homestand, coming off the big win last week, got Rutgers ahead. This is as important as it gets for the Huskies. They're taking on number 10, South Florida, trying to bounce back from a loss. Next. Back at Rentschler Field, here come the Huskies. Soft rain falling right now, more expected this afternoon. It is humid as well. Temperatures getting up near 70 this afternoon, and the wind has become much more of a factor in the last 20 to 25 minutes as we check out the X Factor presented by City. How does South Florida recover from the loss? This first bit of adversity this year, and UConn, well, they're everybody's target now in the Big East. With more on that story, here's Quint Kesnick down on the field. Terry, those emotional questions need to be answered. How will they react to that Rutgers loss? Jim Levitt admitting that the season has been an emotional roller coaster. Now, here's what I observed watching warm-ups. The South Florida team, very businesslike in their approach, but showing the typical hints of their swagger, taunting the student section, dancing to the mu music in the stadium. Meanwhile, UConn, wow, they are calm, they are loose, they are cool. Terry, UConn might as well stand for you confident. Yeah, just spending some time around campus the last couple of days as you check out Randy Etzel in his ninth year, he said, David, this is the year, the really the first year when he's been able to do exactly what he wants to do as a head coach. They have a new practice facility, a building where everything's together, meeting rooms and film, whatnot, and certainly uh, this is as calm as you'll see Jim Levitt in his 11th year, the only head coach ever at the university. 
started the program from scratch. South Florida won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So UConn will receive, and perhaps some of that due to the weather? Well, I think so, and also the fact that UConn might be a little bit more of a threat with their defense on the field as opposed to their offense this year. Albert Alvarado sends it four yards deep. Tyvon Branch will go to the knee and will come out to the 20-yard line, and that's where the Huskies will start their opening series. Six and one and two and zero oh in the Big East, and much of the turnaround due to that man, Tyler Lorenzen, the transfer, went to Iowa State. They switched him to wide out. Didn't want to play wide receiver. Went to Palomar Junior College. Put up huge numbers there, and has really been effective and a, and a a smart field general leading this Husky offense. Andre Dixon, the lone setback, and he is third straight start. Donald Brown was the man. He was out with an ankle injury. He's back now, but it's Dixon who gets the call on first and ten. They actually fake to him, and there goes Lorenzen. Starting lineup, there's Gino Ariema, presented by Best Buy. Leading Randy Edsel's offense in his 100th game as UConn head coach is running back Andre Dixon from New Brunswick, New Jersey. He gained 115 yards and scored a touchdown in last week's win over Louisville. But I'll tell you what, he's not going anywhere unless the big guys up front, William Beatty on the left and Donald Thomas on the right, do a great job today. Yeah, Gino leading the uh, women's program at UConn. Got a great recruiting class, including the high school player of the year coming in trying to win another national championship. Lorenzen throws. There's Larry Taylor with the catch out at the. Nope, he dropped it. So incomplete out of 28. Former player Patrick St. Louis with the defense presented by Best Buy. And leading us on the defensive front four, we have George Selby, nation's leading sack leader, Ben Moffitt, team captain, and a proud parent. And Mike Jenkins, proud parent, and platinum status at corner. At platinum status, those corners are awfully good. Mike Jenkins and Trey Williams, maybe the best combo in the Big East. And there's the man, Ben Moffitt, the senior from Bushnell, Florida, drives back and forth about 110 miles every day because he wants to be with his family. Dump pass over the middle. There's a first down all the way out across the 40 to the 43. DJ Hernandez, the junior from Bristol, Connecticut, the former quarterback. And a gain of 21, David. With Tyler Lorenzen opening up this football game extremely sharp. Had a drop on his first ball. Nice timing over the middle. You mentioned it, Terry, the former quarterback, DJ Hernandez. He was a starter at this time a year ago. Second leading receiver this year, and it's just a natural. You talk to Hernandez and Lorenzen, and they say, we finish each other's thoughts. We're on the same page. We understand the offense as a receiver. He knows exactly what the quarterback needs. Dixon, the hard runner, bounces to the outside. Run out of bounds by Trey Williams. How the heck did he get outside? And Andre Dixon has taken over Terry as a starting running back for this team. And he is a high motor, high energy guy. I think last week he was the difference against Louisville. He just wore down that defense. He comes at you, he brings it every play. Gain of 19. Dixon had 115 yards in the winning touchdown last week against Louisville. Here he comes this way. Looks for a hole. Closes quickly, but a gain of about three to the 35. Carlton Williams, a junior strong safety from Valdosta, Georgia, on the hit. And we visited with Rob Ambrose, the offensive coordinator for UConn yesterday. He said that our offense, especially our quarterback, we like to be very conscientious with the football. And what that means is they don't like to turn the ball over. Only three picks on the season for Tyler Lorenz, and that's the best in the country. So it's second and a long six against a defense that will creep up. That secondary likes to take some chances. Dangerous pass, incomplete, broken up over the middle. DJ Hernandez, the intended receiver. With Tyler Roberts, Michael Back, junior from Orlando, broke it up. Well, this South Florida defense has received a lot of accolades over the last couple years. Really recognizes the best defense in the Big East Conference. But a week ago, they showed some chinks in their armor. And Ray Rice for Rutgers had his way with them. In fact, they've only given up two games over 100 yards on the ground the last two years and they both come against Rutgers and Ray Rice. It's a defense that held uh, Steve Slayton to what 54 yards in that matchup and beating West Virginia. A lot of room to the outside for the speed of Andre Dixon tripped up but not before 
He gets another first down for the Huskies. Yeah, this big offensive line for Connecticut. And we have not heard a lot about this group. It was really a weakness a year ago on a four and eight team, but they are starting to gel. And when I talked to Rob Ambrose, the offensive coordinator, about Dixon wearing down the Louisville defense a week ago, and he said, yeah, the offensive line had a lot to do with it as well. Pretty good block from uh, Terrence Jeffords, too, a wide out to spring Dixon that time. So first and 10. At the 24, out of the eye, Anthony Sherman, the fullback ahead of Dixon. Look at that hole. But his defense struggling on this opening drive. Nate Allen finally made the tackle. You know, Quint Kesnick brought up a very interesting issue in the open. You know, how would the South Florida team react? And number two in the country going into that Thursday night game a week ago, and it looks like they have not received a wake-up call yet. And the rain starts to fall a little harder. You see UConn 0-10 against ranked opponents. But a little bit skewed. They'd never been in this spot before. Dixon. Stutter steps his way down to the 10. And another first down. And Keith Gray and Donald Thomas, the center and the big right guard, working well in tandem. And now this weather has really played into the strength of the UConn team. They got some bad weather against Brian Brom and a very powerful offense for Louisville a week ago. An offense that was averaging over 40 points a game. And again today, a, a talented offense, a team with speed and athleticism. I think UConn is fine with the rain. Tenth play of the opening drive for UConn. Coming this way with Dixon. Matched up man for man on the corner and run out of bounds at the nine. Mike Jenkins was there initially, and Nate Allen helped. Good help. Pretty good matchup there out on the corner. As you see, the rain wasn't falling that high. It, it stopped earlier, and uh, you see the temperature about 70 degrees, so it's warm. It's, it's muggy this afternoon, and the rain is supposed to get heavier throughout the day. I used to hate these games, and, uh, you know, strangely enough, I'm from the state of Oregon, but I used to hate to play with a wet football Rob Ambrose the offensive coordinator for the Huskies he said hit his offensive game plan went out the window in the rain after the third or fourth pl fourth play last week they keep it on the ground Dixon fights inside the five down close to the three and they've kept it on the ground since that opening couple of plays this is something that you didn't have to deal with Terry Gannon you didn't have to deal with the rain the weather Always in a comfortable 70 degree arena shooting the basketball. It sounds like an intelligent choice to me. <laughs> as, as opposed to just happenstance. Big third down play. 53 yards already for Dixon on this opening drive. Here he is again. Met right at the line of scrimmage and going nowhere. So they drive all the way down and Bruce Mom Premier, the junior from Miami, meets Dixon head on. And that'll bring up fourth. And South Florida getting a win there inside the red zone, forcing a field goal attempt. Gave up some big chunks, Jim Levitt's defense did on that drive. Tony Trevino, the junior from Boca Raton, comes on for the try from 22 yards. 13 out of 16 on the year for Trevino. Be careful with the hold and the snap in the rainy conditions, but up and good. So positive drive for UConn, but also South Florida said, hey, we held near our goal line on a rainy, rainy day as we go to break. 3-0 Connecticut. Welcome you back as you are watching ESPN College Football on ABC and it has started to pour here at Rentschler Field. I mean a sarcastic cheer went up about 30 seconds ago because it just unloaded three nothing Yukon in the driving rain. So back deep for South Florida it won't be Torres Johnson because he's out two to three weeks our leading receiver and return man with a sprained ankle, Jerome Murphy, Ryan Gilliam. Well, it, it makes everything difficult right now. I want to pick your brain, too. As a former quarterback for UCLA, I, 
how difficult it is in these conditions. Didn't have to deal with these conditions much out there in Pasadena over the years. Taken by Murphy. Straight ahead. And out to the 35. So that's where South Florida, pretty good field position to start. But pregame ritual, you, you know it well now for Jim Levitt if you're a college football fan. But the wind sprints, getting everybody pumped up. You got to be a different bird to start a program from scratch. He's Take got, it here. He's got a nice little burst, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and still going on the sidelines, as he always is. Matt Grothy comes on, the sophomore from Lakeland, Florida, one of the best freshman seasons last year. The Big East has ever seen following it up this year and he's as much of a threat with his legs as he is with his arm. He's going to keep it looking for a hole outside. And bounced out at the 39. Patrick St. Louis former linebacker and strength coach now presented by Best Buy. Coming through for the offense. We have starring quarterback Matt Grody big time playmaker. And also we have Marcus Edwards. Man he has some hands. And on the offensive line leading the charge and making the way for the running backs is Jake Griffin, team captain. Right, Jake Griffin has uh, graded out the best on that offensive line in for Nick Epona, who's been out with a knee since the Auburn game. Inside give Jamar Taylor bounces up across midfield. He may go. Foot race on the far sideline. Knocked out inside the 10. Taylor, the freshman from Lakeland, Florida, the transfer from Alabama, taking it almost the distance. And a gain of 54. Well, this South Florida running game is done by committee. And we figured coming into this game that Taylor would get the fewest carries of the three. Ben Williams, Mike Ford, the other two running backs. And a nice decisive move. Great work up front by the big fellas. And it was Jake Griffin, the center, who we just mentioned, who sprung him initially. Ben Williams this time. Away from one, spins back to a host of tacklers in that defense. Brought to you by Best Buy and Gino Ariema now. On a defensive line are the team sack leaders. Number 45, Julius Williams, and number 50, Cody Brown. In the middle, we have the Husky linebacker, who's actually from Connecticut, Scott Lutris. Led the team in tackles and was a Big East Defensive Player of the Week. And in the secondary, cornerback Darius Butler, making his 30th career start. Uh, Gino needs some defense right now for the Yukon Huskies. Run up the middle goes Williams inside the five down to about the four. Now Williams second leading rusher the leading rusher is Matt Grothy. And the whole perspective of the football game changes with this rain especially when it's raining this hard and whenever you can take a lead in a football game with the weather. It's really a leg up. And this is going to be very challenging handling the ball for both quarterbacks throughout the afternoon. Full backfield now, three backs as the ball's on the turf, as you mentioned that. Grothy got it back initially, and I think he eventually did too. Scott Lutris, who had those 18 tackles and was the Big East Defensive Player of the Week, got there first. When you're a quarterback, you have so many things to think about getting the team in and out of the huddle pre-snap reads at the line of scrimmage and then you mix in a ball that's wet as a quarterback in the heavy rain you come out of the huddle and you're really wondering did the center keep the ball you know, dry did the referees do a good job of drying the football it's just one more thing in the back of your mind that you need to worry about 26 yard try Delbert Alvarado 9 of 16 on the year so he's trying to answer the one UConn put up and that is wide right no good Alvarado misses from 26, and the Husky fans love it here at a drenched Wrenchler Field. This presentation of college football brought to you by Best Buy. For a complete home theater experience, get HD done right at Best Buy. Saturn. With five totally new models, it's just something to rethink about. Saturn. And Diet Dr. Pepper. Treat yourself to the rich, decadent taste. There's nothing diet about it. All right, give me the line from Caddyshack now as we watch the rain. Which, which line are you talking about? I don't think the heavy stuff. Oh. <laughs> gonna come I don't think the heavy <laughs> stuff's going to come down for a while, right, Carl? It Is has. Carl said that? Yeah. With the bishop. 
But Renton on first down as they take over after the missed field goal. He can run too in between the tackles. Tough running across the 35 to the 36 and uh, tough conditions all the way around for these quarterbacks handling the football Quint. Yeah Terry you can see on that last possession right there Tyler are really uh, emphasizing ball security each team's allowed to check in 16 footballs they use eight per half and it's really up to the ball crew on the sideline to keep towels over the ball right now the rain has slowed down a bit but anytime that ball is placed on the wet turf without a towel it's going to pick up moisture Terry. I know we're trying to save money. We can't get you an umbrella. How about a hat at least though? Wayne just cascading off of him. Dixon sidesteps one and then is wrapped up by Nate Allen the free safety sophomore from Cape Coral Florida. Well and, and it's really the time from those when those balls come out from underneath the towels they get set as Quint said out on the turf and the and the you know, the officiating crew is handling the football. Their hands are wet. And then you get your center, and he's been mucking it up in the trenches. He's got some mud on his hand, and you really never know what you're going to get by the time you receive the snap. See, so you're blaming it on the guys in the trenches again. There you go. Quarterbacks stick together. It's got to make you hesitant, everything that you do. Well, you don't want to blame it on the center. He's liable to wrap you in the huddle. Lorenzen, plenty of time, and the footing bad for Larry Taylor. He fell down. Incomplete. Well, a reminder, four races to go. The chase standings up for grabs. Teammates Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon battling down to the wire. Who's going to come out on top? The chase for the next NASCAR Nextel Cup roars into Atlanta tomorrow. On ABC at 1 Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. You got Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, the top two. Jimmy Johnson edged him out. His teammate last week did win, so they go to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Tony Stewart. One last year against Atlanta. He needs a repeat to stay in the chase. By the way, about 10 minutes to the distaff, the Breeders' Cup on ESPN, the greatest day in racing, richest day. Now it's two days. Yesterday, three races. And all day long today, Donald Brown out of the backfield. First time we've seen him, the sophomore from Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey, started the first five games, as this will bring up fourth and about four. But uh, Certainly Brown a guy who they can go to if, if Dixon were to go down because Brown was a starter and big star last year. Yeah, he struggled last week only five carries for eight yards had a big fumble that was returned for a touchdown. Does he call on for the punt Marcus Edwards back got to be careful even with this football. Drilled on a bounds Edwards and there is the flag. Boy, he was popped after the 36 yard punt an eight yard return Lou Allen was there and just crushed him yeah, and Lou Allen that is a very uncharacteristic mistake for this football team personal foul late hit out of bounds number five on the kicking team 15 yard penalty first down that is the type of mistake that Randy Edsel and this team has avoided for quite some time over the course of this year. So South Florida will have pretty good field position. Trailing 3 0 with 523. And there's the signal for the timeout. We'll step away. You are watching ESPN College Football on ABC. The rain has stopped at least momentarily. 523 left in the first, and UConn up 3 0. So South Florida after the penalty takes over first and 10 from their own 47. Mike Ford, the tailback is in wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage going nowhere. And check out our ESPNU all state standings and uh, you know, number one number two you can argue that BC with a big win at Virginia Tech the other night Ryan certainly a Heisman candidate but uh, you go down the list any surprises there for you or anything. You know, what surprises me is why is West Virginia ranked seventh in the BCS and South Florida 10. I mean you got, they both have one loss and South Florida beat West Virginia head to head. I think it underscores the weakness of the BCS system and and that that could happen between a first second and third ranked team at the end of the year. Brophy designed run across midfield to the 49 of UConn and, and certainly the timing of losses really play into the whole equation and, and that's I think not it's the a, best scenario. No, it's not the best scenario because these two teams, when you were the, you talk about South Florida and West Virginia, they could end up running the table conceivably, and you would have West Virginia ahead of South Florida, a team that South Florida handled and, and handled pretty easily. Any way we could figure out how to average those rankings through uh, much of the last part of the season, it would certainly help. 
complete over the middle first down down to the 32 quick throw from growth and a gain of 17. Jesse Hester whose father played at Florida State and a nice stretch of time in the NFL he is a slot receiver that is very good at finding the voids in the defense just hooked his route up gave Matt Grothy a nice picture down the field and the game winner against Auburn three catches 55 yards and a touchdown last week in the big win inside play fake Grothy with plenty of time had a man over the middle too Williams was wide open he just missed it well, and that is a case of a wet ball we've seen Matt Grothy over the last year and a half throw a ball with nice ballistics a nice tight spiral and that ball just got away from him and as you said Terry he had Williams open he had a shot down the middle of the field four minutes to post for the distaff race nine uh, on the card today at Monmouth in the Breeders Cup you got all your exactors Quinellas trifectas good I'm covered. in place yeah. good good Tony ESPN growth he looks <laughs> Touch back inside the 25 and all the way down to the 23. Shy of a first down, but a gain of nine on the play. Oh, muddy track yesterday. Sloppy today as well. The turf soft, but uh, the greatest horses, trainers, jockeys in the world. All at Monmouth in New Jersey today. And you get conditions like that and you get some long shots coming in. Some good right. opportunities to make some money. Third and a long one. Williams gets the call, drives the legs, and is close. Let's we'll see where the spot is. Now you've got a turf course that's <laughs> very soft. Rated here. as soft here as well. And you now this really does play into the hands of UConn when they're on offense and defense, in my opinion. A lot of skill for South Florida on the field when their defense is out there and of course this offense it all plays off of Matt Grothy his ability to handle the football the faking the throwing the tucking it and running the football and that's short so there you see the distance they have to go Delbert Alvarado missing that chip shot a 26 yarder on the impressive first drive I think this is a no brainer you line up and you go for it yeah they're all out there right now Remember Alvarado, he mentioned that the four misses against Auburn finally hit one to send it to OT. But uh, certainly, when you're 9 and 17 on the year, you just missed a 26 yarder, you're going to leave the offense out to gain about five inches. Allows backfield again on fourth and short. Not a bad play to just keep it in Grothy's hands here. That's what he does. Drives ahead and should have it. Gets across, but there's the flag and the procedure. You see the official signaling that. So crowd loving it here. That's going to back up the Bulls. Right snap. False start. 78 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Tom Thompson, the referee today, giving you the, the news. Well, these are the kind of mistakes that were fatal for South Florida. It looks like they're going to try it. A field goal here but these mistakes kinds of mistakes were fatal last week in the Thursday night game against Rutgers and Jim Levitt's team had more than one opportunity late to win against Rutgers the penalties a couple mental mistakes by Matt Grothy on the last drive so after missing the 26 yarder, this is a try from 44 yards. Alvarado, who's long this year, is from 47. High snap, good hold. Severino, plenty of distance, but not the direction. Wide right on the first one, wide left on the next. The confidence level in the kicking game right now has got to be very low for Jim Levitt as we send it to New York. Back in New York, I'm Matt Weiner, keeping you current on everything happening across the country. Let's start with this Taco Bell update from the cocktail party in Jacksonville underway. Florida fumbled away an opportunity. Back comes Georgia. No Sean Moreno up and over. Watch every Bulldog 
Out to celebrate, that'll draw a good flag. Also get him a 7-0 lead. Tim Tebow, touchdown pass has tied it up there. Oregon, up top, thanks to a Dennis Dixon touchdown run, 7-3 in Eugene. Matt, thank you very much. Who do you like, Tebow or Ryan right now? Heisman wise. Well, there are a lot of people, including people on our network, that are really pumping up Tim Tebow, but that Florida team, They've lost twice, and no matter how well Tim Tebow is playing, I don't think you can say he's playing at a higher level than Matt Ryan. And Matt Ryan's team up at BC, they're they're undefeated. Matt Ryan is an upperclassman too. Yeah, yeah. Tebow is a sophomore. I think hands down right now, Matt Ryan is my guy. Dixon took it two yards on first down, so second and eight, and four receivers out of the gun. Lorenzen. Plenty of time again, no pressure, now flushed out. And room to run if he chooses. He throws on the run behind the attendant, and what a catch with the flag. Red Kanye coming back in a diving catch in South Florida territory. Mike Jenkins was there and is arguing. Gain Kanye. of 23. Kanye was working against one of the best cornerbacks in college football. Mike Jenkins and it looks like Jenkins may get hit with a pass interference call here. Ball was underthrown. Pass interference. Number four in the defense. 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. Tyler Lorenzen sticking with the game plan being conservative. You see there the ball coming out the wet ball wow. continuing to affect these quarterbacks in an adverse way. Con you not able to make the catch but Mike Jenkins getting caught for the infraction down the sideline. Great effort by Kanye, and there's a guy who's going to play on Sunday afternoon at Jenkins. Now, both of these cornerbacks for South Florida can cover a lot of ground, and you know, Tyler Lorenzen has to be very, very aware of the threat on the outside. These cornerbacks love to jump routes, and they're always a threat to take the football the other way. So, first and ten. Lorenzen under center this time gets it off to Dixon who's been the workhorse in the first couple of drives and across the 45 to the 46 there's the action here college football primetime presented by GoDaddy.com on ESPN 2 number nine Kansas taking on Texas A&M and 745 Eastern South Carolina Steve Spurrier against Tennessee critical game in the SEC race college football lives here Dixon 11 carries so far for 59 yards already. Well, the old ball coach for the Gamecocks, they got caught sleeping a bit on Vandy last week. And Vandy's not bad now, Adam, against Georgia a couple of weeks ago. This one tipped and picked off. Williams, Trey Williams with the interception. Thrown a bit high, and then Williams went high into the air to get it. Yeah, and this is the risk that you take whenever you call a pass play as an offensive coordinator in these conditions. You're risking a turnover. Lorenzen looking for Kanye. And it looked like that might have been Ben Moffitt, the All American candidate, getting over and getting a hand on the football, creating the tip and a nice play by Trey Williams to make sure to secure the football on the turnover. Third interception this year for Williams in his 10th in the last two seasons. See what they've done taking the football away this year. Incomplete as Jamar Taylor is just ripped. Paid for it. Dana Delisner. Strong safety from right here in East Hartford on the hit. Now the Huskies come in with impressive numbers. Number three team in the country defensively when it comes to holding teams to minimal points only 12 points a game they're giving up they play loose in the secondary and they love to get numbers up on the line of scrimmage not a big pressure team they brought some against Louisville though in the win last week Rothy wrapped up across the 45 may have gotten to about the 43 Danny Lance Santa middle linebacker and a senior from Harrisburg Pennsylvania got there you know, Terry was sat down and talked to Hank Hughes the assistant head coach he's in charge of the defense and he said we we don't mind making teams be patient quarterbacks hitting balls and we can make them drive the football go on long drives. We figure that sooner or later an offense is going to make a mistake. Well they give up the big play to Jamar Taylor in the opening moments but nothing since Hester over the middle and wrapped up right away at the 40 shy of a first down. 
Elliston on the coverage and the hit again. I think this is in an area of the football field where again you really think seriously about going for it. I would especially when you got a guy like Matt Grothy under center and Levitt's going to call timeout as they dry off the football to talk it over. So they burn a timeout with six seconds left here in the first. And you got fourth and two coming up. Yeah, I'm not sure why you use a yeah, timeout there the unless right the here. play clock was running down, but I don't believe the play clock, clock was anywhere near six seconds. And Levitt ran right out there as you look at uh, those teams in the top 25 at some point five teams. Yeah this is very impressive. I mean look at the highest rankings here. South Florida gets up to number two West Virginia number three and I think we might see West Virginia rise to a position again this year in the top five. Cincinnati got all the way up to number 15 in the rankings. I think about what West Virginia coming back with a win today over Rutgers but they're, they were expected to uh, to finish and some struggles and certainly Louisville throughout the Big East schedule. And a lot of on to pump this time. Nowhere near keeping it where he needed it. 39 yards and he just kicked it out of the that is interesting. Kicks it out the back yeah. of the end zone after taking a timeout. Time huh. Well, we'll continue. It's three nothing Connecticut here. This presentation of college football presented by Best Buy will continue. Right after this message and a word from our ABC station. Gorgeous scenes here along the roads of Connecticut. Nori and I flew into Boston, had our little DVD camera. These are the pictures we took after trying to get into Fenway the other night, not being able to. Second quarter just getting underway. UConn number 23 against number 10 South Florida. Three nothing Huskies. Dixon has been the man straight ahead into the line up across the 25. Terry, I have to admit that was not a bad way to spend an afternoon teeing up a little Dave Matthews band, taking a drive through the countryside. The people, colors changing. People don't believe it. There's no way I drive here. With it was you. it was special it's for me, Terry. It was a special moment. To. I was emotional. Second down and a long three. <laughs> Dixon, nowhere to go this time. Carlton Williams, a strong safety, read it perfectly, stayed in his lane as we check out our Pacific Life game summary. On a cloudy, wet, windy day here. Now we don't see it on our summary, but the two missed field goals by Alvarado were critical. Couple big plays wasted by South Florida, and I think both offensive coordinators are starting to tone their play calling down a little bit. They're realizing that the quarterbacks are having trouble with their ballistics and keeping the tight spirals down the field. Yeah, you kind of had to do it last week, as a matter of fact. Contact from behind, and about eight flags come out. Everybody who's got a hanky threw it. Nate Allen came right over the top. Larry Taylor was the intended. And Allen just did not do a good job of timing this up. Pass interference. Number five on the defense. The ball we placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Nate Allen coming into this season with some high accolades, being touted as an All-American candidate. He struggled on Thursday night last week. Comes right over the back of Taylor, and that was not a tough one to call. If you're going against a defense that you know takes chances, they create turnovers, they've created 24 of them this year, 12 interceptions, now 13. How do you take advantage of that? Here comes Lorenzen running outside. I know that's part of the game plan for UConn to try to take advantage of just that and the speed of South Florida. Well, and, and you also, you know, you're, you're dealing with a defense for South Florida that has great talent at defensive end. We saw George Selvey come off the right end and disrupt things just on that last play cause Tyler Lorenzen to flush but a lot of challenges that you face with the speed at defensive end great defensive backs and then you got Ben Moffat sitting there in the middle now Selvi more sacks than anybody in college football this year 11 and a half coming into the game so 
second and ten. Lorenzen out of the gun. Looking for it all. Had a man under through him. Double coverage and incomplete. Jeffers had a step and a half on the two defensive backs, and the ball was under thrown. Yeah, Jeffers is a prototype wide receiver and a guy who's strong, very tough to disrupt his release off the line of scrimmage, but the South Florida defensive backfield really plays the ball in the well, uh, well in the air. Nate Allen, the free safety, along with Mike Jenkins, getting down the field, making sure that UConn was not going to hit the big play. Lorenzen, two of seven for 25 yards and an interception so far. Taylor out of the backfield. Got a first down. Larry Taylor, the speedster, into South Florida territory and brought down by Tyler Roberts. A gain of 21. Uh, this is what you love to see from Tyler Lorenzen. This isn't the most accurate ball, but again, getting nice protection up front. Comes down to Taylor. And that's just a beautiful play by Larry Taylor. You can't count on many running backs to go up and make that play, especially with the wet football. Uh, that's a tremendous catch and a pretty nice run after the catch. Taylor's the guy who brought a punt back 74 yards last week against Louisville. This one's on the ground. Lorenzen falls on it back at the 40. So a loss of 14 on the snap that went right through him. Right, from play to play, you're really never sure. Well, the football being this wet just what sort of problems you're going to face. I thought this was a smart play by Tyler Lorenzen to not try to create, you know, take your medicine, get back and cover the football. These were the conditions last week against Louisville. So if you're Randy Utso, you know your team has faced it, but uh, certainly it's not fun if you're a quarterback on any day like this. Taylor in motion. They fake it to him, bring it back for the screen. Dixon's got a world of room to run. Andre Dixon looking for a block and across the 35 down to about the 33. 27 yards and that's what the defensive coaches for South Florida were worried about how they use Dixon in the screen game and a number of different ways. Yeah the South Florida coaches were very concerned and this is the area they're going to exploit. Dixon's going to leak out. And the Bull coaching staff was very concerned about how just well this team on offense executes the screen game Dixon has a nice feel getting lost and then sneaking out into the flat and great timing by Lorenz and drawing the pass rush to him in the pocket uh, and Dixon so much a part of this offense it, you talk about his rushing yards that's one thing but uh, they use him so many different ways the numbers show up in different categories Alan Cray a backup nose guard the man who's shaken up yeah, that can take the wind out of a defense giving up a big first down when you had UConn backed up. That's devastating for a defense mentally to give up a play like that one. And he'll walk slowly off the field. Aaron Harris is on for him right now. Yeah, there's, there's a guy who's taken over. Third straight start this week after well, early in the season, some trouble suspended for the first couple of games, but much more mature. Andre Dixon, now you talked to him and said, I, I know what it's all about now. I think he was the difference, as I said last week. Uh, he's gone over the 100 yard mark three of the last five games, and his intensity running the football, just being relentless, pounding at the Louisville defense last Friday night. Four receivers set on first and 10. Lorenzen again with time and had Larry Taylor. Well, he's had, even when he's missed, he's had receivers open. Of course, the, certainly the conditions could come into play there. Yeah, Tyler Lorenzen, you could see it after the play, jumping up and down. He knew he had Larry Taylor again. And Taylor's doing an exceptional job of getting separation on these crossing routes. That's the look of a quarterback, Terry, that knows he should have hit a ball. Ninth play of the drive. Remember the, the long drive to start the game that ended up with three points on the board. Lorenzen's going to keep it this time. Back to the line of scrimmage and then swarmed under. Tyrone McKenzie, the strong side linebacker, the first man to beat him there. 
Cleveland, Terry, you look at Tyler Lorenzen and the difference in offense. I mean, he joined this team only eight months ago. And Rob Ambrose, the offensive coordinator, says that he coaches Tyler, Tyler Lorenzen like he's been around for years. And I know that you and I both watched that game last Friday night. Lorenzen, he's not the prettiest guy to watch at the quarterback position, but when the game was on the line, the final two drives of the game, he got things done against Louisville. Makes the plays. It was at Iowa State, they switched him to wide receiver, and actually the man who just tackled him, Tom Ron McKenzie, was at Iowa State, their leading tackler last year. Dixon should have a first down. The quick burst out of the backfield before Roberts could drive him to the turf. Now, a quick burst is right, and that's the key. Dixon hits it now. It takes the underneath handoff, plants that right foot, gets north and south, and he is a type of running back that will really finish off runs at the point of attack. 14 carries, 76 yards already for Dixon here in the first half. Hernandez in motion. They go to Dixon, number two. Fights his way inside the 20. Tyler Roberts on the stop, but Dixon, so many different things and different ways he can beat you. Well, and, you know, he's had some problems here. You know, he's turned things around. He's a great story. You know, comes from a tough upbringing. He was a star in high school, was suspended for a couple games, but he has really turned things around. And Coach Edsel talks about becoming much more mature. He's taken the starting role, Terry, and he has really run with it. Donald Brown in for Dixon now at tailback. He gets the call. Man who averaged 135 yards on the ground a game last year in the Big East. Man Moffitt, but kiss semifinalist, made the stop. Watch Dixon knowing his work. Yeah, and he's very, very good with his vision. Eyes so critical for a back. And then we see his gifts getting lost in the line, sneaking outside for the, the big screen play. And then again, hitting it hard between the tackles. Ran for 115 yards last week against that Louisville defense. Big play coming up here, though. Th third and five as Taylor goes in motion. Lorenzen under pressure, throws out. Here comes Brown. Inside the five. Second catch of the day for Donald Brown out of the backfield. And it's first and goal. Now, this is a great way to get out of the doghouse. Five carries for only eight yards last week a big fumble return for a touchdown Randy Edsel said during the, the off week uh, during the during the week he said we want to get Donald Brown his confidence back we just want him to settle down that was a beautiful play Dixon's back in there behind Sherman the fullback Anthony Davis also fullback now in motion Play action, Lorenzen to a man wide open in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, UConn. Steve Browse, the tight end, with his third touchdown catch of the year. And the Huskies look to make it 10 nothing. Trevino on for the extra point. High snap, can't get it down. Throw almost completed, and now the play whistle dead. So 9 nothing after the in unsuccessful extra point. Tyler Lorenzen, a great job of selling on the fake. Browse leaks out into the corner. Nine point lead for the Huskies. They're looking back to the touchdown. Browse is going to give the look of blocking down on the All American here. And then he's going to sneak back outside. Nice action in the backfield on the fake by Lorenzen. Not the prettiest ball in the world finding Browse in the back of the end zone but it gets the job done and this Connecticut team has been a tough outfit to come back against with a lead and they have balance offensively they have had all year the fifth different receiver to catch a pass this afternoon 
Gilliam and Murphy back deep as the clouds are parting now and uh, there's no rain. Pretty nice afternoon at the moment at least. Desi Cullen sending it deep. Jerome Murphy from his own four. Hit hard at the 24. That's where South Florida will start. There is a flag on the play as we send it to Matt Weiner in the studio. All right, Terry, this Sports Center Minute is powered by Vizio at Monmouth Park in New Jersey. Six of the eight Breeders' Cups races are in the books. Ginger Punch took the Emirates Airline Breeders' Cup distap. The winner paid $11 for a $2 ticket. In Jacksonville, Matthew Stafford has thrown two passes, each for touchdowns, one for each team. Wandy Pierre-Lewis took that one back 25 yards. He was penalized on the dismount. It's 14 all in Jacksonville. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Very nice way to put it. One for each team. That's the positive. Glass is half full, I guess. And the penalty against Jim Levitt's club bringing it back. But uh, Ginger Punch, huh? The distaff. A couple more big ones to go at the Breeders' Cup. And we'll check back in uh, with Matt. Get an update on what's happening at Monmouth uh, Park. Interesting little wrinkle. The Breeders' Cup holding that event over the course of two days of racing. More now. races, more money. Horrible weather, unfortunately. First and ten. Cedric Hill in motion stops in the backfield along with Grothy. Trying to get something going offensively. Hill tries to throw a block, but they swarm under at the 14. Lawrence Wilson, outside linebacker, making the initial hit. South Florida, as we give you your AFLAC trivia question, needed only 121 weeks to reach the AP poll after moving in the, the FBS, which team reached the AP poll in fewer weeks. Okay. Uh, I hope you're sitting down, Terry. I think this week I may have the answer to an AFLA. No, you don't. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> you're 0 for the season so far. <laughs> Quick throw, Amari Jackson. Was there contact? He thinks so, but the officials say no. Tyvon Branch, cornerback on the coverage. And Grothy right now, this is an offense that has not been able to get much going. The quick strikes on the first drive, but that was it. Well, they don't have a lot of big play ability outside. Mitchell is a speed guy, but you really have to rely on Matt Grothy, and a lot of his effectiveness is based on his run. Third down, Grothy over the middle, intercepted. Lutris picks it off, trying to bring it back. Lutris to the end zone. Julius Williams, the defensive end, got a hand on it. Scott Lutris, who had the 18 tackles against Louisville, picked it off and brought it back. 23 yards to the end zone. And Matt Growth, he does not look like he is 100%. Limping as he comes off the field, Scott Lutris. What a season this young linebacker is having for the University of Connecticut. Working on growth a little bit. Amari Jackson is down, hurt on the field. There's the tip by Williams. Yeah, Williams got his big paw up on the football, and Lutris played running back in high school, an exceptional athlete in space. And he leads the country. If you look at all the linebackers across the USA, he is number one in interceptions. This Connecticut defense just thrives on turnovers. 17th interception of the season and growth, for Connecticut. Grothy hobbling off after the interception. Well, this is where you find out a lot a lot about your club if you're Jim Levitt. You know, you're sailing, everything's going great. As you look at Lutris now with four interceptions, but uh, once you lose, they lost last week, a bit of adversity, and now you're down early in this one on the road, and it could be 16, 17, nothing right away. You find out about the character of your players. Right, if you're playing in comfortable throwing conditions on a nice day, then this offense might not worry so much about a 15 or 16 point deficit. But with the rain, that makes it a monumental challenge for South Florida to come back, especially the way that Connecticut is playing on defense. So they work on growth in the sideline, and Jackson hobbles off with help. 
And Trevino on for the extra point. A bullet right through. So Randy Edsel flying high. Levitt trying to pump up his quarterback right now and instill some confidence. A lot of work to do. They're down 16 zip. This presentation of college football brought to you by Chili's. Break out of your rut at Chili's. Pepper in some baby backs. Pepper in some fun. Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. And Aflac. Ask about it at work. Carve your pumpkin yet? Are you ready? I'm going out to the patch tomorrow with my wife. We're going to pick out just a couple, and we'll have them on display this week, right into Wednesday night. A little bit late. Just a couple days before Halloween. That's way too late. Yeah, enjoy it for a few weeks. Back deep, Jerome Murphy, Ryan Gilliam, and time to uh, dig down, see what you're made of here. If you're South Florida, test it again on the road, Gilliam. Cuts back, barely gets to the 20-yard line. Tough going, and uh, Quinn Kesnick, uh, Quinn, he had a chance to eavesdrop a moment ago. Yeah, after that last pick, Matt Grothy getting his right ankle taped on the sideline. Head coach Jim Levitt comes over, tapped him on the shoulder, says, hey, it's just one play. It is just one play. Play loose and let's move on. And there, there is Coach Levitt leaning over and looking his quarterback in the eyes. This team now behind the eight ball. Tough weather conditions down by 16. And now mine's 16, and at this point, too, coming off that loss, you wonder how you're going to react to that, and they haven't reacted well here in the first half. Jamar Taylor had a big play early in this one, nothing since, and a gain of a couple on this play. What, what do they do with the offense right now, and what's UConn doing? Well, I think we're seeing a situation here where Matt Grothy coming off that last drive a week ago on Thursday night, a team that was... Ranked number two in the country as you look at Matt Grothy's numbers. I think we're seeing the first time in Grothy's young career where he's really facing some adversity. It's going to be interesting to see how he reacts. From the shotgun over the middle, complete across the 30 up to the 33. So they'll move the chains after the gain of 11. That's Hester Jr. on the catch. Gave you the athletic trivia question a few moments ago. South Florida needed only 121 weeks to reach. The AP poll, which team reached the BCS rankings in fewer weeks? Ah, Nori didn't get a chance to answer. Was it Boise State? I'll believe you if you said yes. Yeah, I, that was the team I had, believe it or not. Sure. Brophy well, keeps it, runs between the tack. I do believe you. I'm serious. Well, Don't shake your hand. Next week, will give, give me a chance to actually answer the question. <laughs> And then I'll have a chance to. I was going to give you a hint and say blue field. They, right well, there. that a hint that gives it away entirely. How many of those are there in the country? Boise State. On a purpose, very, very rapid ascension under Dan Hawkins. Gain of five on first down for Grothy. Ben Williams all the way wide to the near side. Flush down. Grothy throws on the run. Complete to Hester. Tripped up. His fourth catch already in the game here in the first half. Now Matt Grothy is going to have to respond in a hurry. This UConn defense playing at a very high level, and he does so many things well. A rookie of the year in the Big East a year ago, led the team in rushing and passing. He's a quarterback that you want to concentrate on not allowing to break outside. You want to make sure he does his damage from the pocket. The kind of guy you're playing down at the park and you're picking teams, you, you choose him first because he'll he's just going to win. He's a gamer. Keeps it this time, and it's a gain of seven. And the design runs for him are, are very good. Sometimes when he's flushed out, he has to make that decision to run, to throw it. He can make some mistakes and did in that last one. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. When he gets outside on the run, he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks as we look at just how prolific he's been in less than two years but he gets outside the pocket he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks on the run and he is very dangerous when he pulls it and tries to pick up positive yards down the field and they work on a player here for south florida and quickly we will throw it to matt weiner in the studio matt all right terry let's get you the nominee for this week's pontiac game changing performance late this afternoon in louisville pittsburgh was poised to tie it up but LaShawn mccoy couldn't squeeze the handoff 
Rod Council collected it, put the Cardinals back over 500 on the season. Check out the season's best Pontiac game-changing performances. Just go to ESPN.com. Thank you. Jake Griffin, the center, was the man who was shaken up. Nick Capona is on for him. Nothing doing. Straight into the line. That UConn defense that maybe doesn't take many chances. They still they, they create turnovers and just a very solid defense. Danny Lancena, the senior from Pennsylvania, on the stop. Turf coming up from Monmouth in just 10 minutes. 10 minutes to post for race 10. On third and five over the middle. Hester another catch, but they blow it dead. And there's a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Right, a snap. False start. There's 70 in the offense. Five yard penalty. And then start down. Capona comes on. In relief of Griffin, who's shaken up, and there's a mistake. And mistakes last week hurt this club. Third and long situations get magnified in the rain with the wet football. Out of the gun. Grothy to run this time. Can he get there? Nope. Knocked down at the 48, Scott Lutris, who had the interception on the last series. Turf in the helmet and a big stop. Huskies really playing their defensive strategy to perfection, playing very loose zone. Back in the secondary, getting men up on the line of scrimmage. And they're just making South Florida put long drives together. And in the weather, that's tough for a Matt Grothy to do. Very sure tacklers, and you can see Jim Levitt pretty frustrated on the South Florida sideline. Larry Taylor back deep at his own 15. Alvarado's punt. And there's the fair catch. And clearly he makes the fair catch simple this time. The signal for the fair catch last week was a quick one. And he brought it back 74 yards for a touchdown. And it wasn't called back. That, that one. A little hit. more definitive yeah. this week. You are watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Winchler Field, soggy, but not raining right now here in East Hartford. It's been all UConn so far. 16-0 over the number 10 ranked Bulls of South Florida. Tyler Lorenzen throws, got a man deep over the middle, high into the air. Kanye comes down with it. Brad Kanyu, a gain of 34. Well, you got to love the aggressiveness of the play calling. Rob Ambrose keeping the pedal to the metal. Offensive coordinator for the Huskies taking a shot down the field. And a pretty nice ball by Tyler Lorenz and making the ball behave for him, dropping it over the top to Kanyu. He's got that towel out there with him right now. It's, uh, it's a little drier than it was to start the game, at least, and they open it up. Five receivers set. Lorenzen's going to run between the tackles, and that's what he likes to do as we send it down to Quinn. Terry Amari, Jackson wide receiver for South Florida, likely done for the day. Right knee injury. Keep in mind the Bulls playing without Taurus Johnson on the outside as well today. So numbers of wide receiver uh, could become an issue. Yeah, the top two receivers, as a matter of fact, too. Taurus Johnson out with a sprained ankle at least a couple of weeks. He was injured against Louisville, and now Jackson, who's caught 21 balls on the year, he would be out too. And a comeback needed here. Dixon looks for a hole. Nate Allen brings him down at the 40, but not before they move the chains. A gain of seven for Dixon, who's been big in this first half. Well, this husky offensive line, it looks a lot like the second half last week against Louisville. This offensive line is starting to take some of the will away from this South Florida defensive front. Keep it on the ground to Dixon. Tough yards to the 37. And while we have a moment, a reminder, country music's biggest night with performances by 
music's hottest stars for the first time ever you've got an exclusive award show performance by the Eagles live Wednesday November 7th on ABC Mr. Nori a chance to see uh, Glenn Fry and uh, the guys they Joe Walsh great. they were great on Wednesday night saw them in Los Angeles at the Nokia theater the brand new Nokia across from the Staples Center thanks for the call thanks for the invitation next time we have a ticket available here we'll invite you sure. stay tuned sure <laughs> I'll, I'll sit by the phone Dixon. I'll tell you what watching Joe line. Walsh Don Hanley Glenn Fry, Timothy B. Schmidt, some of the best songwriting, and you know anybody in college right now watching us, going, "Who is he talking no, I about?" I assure you, Terry. Now I agree to disagree with you on that. I think there are a lot of people, a lot of younger people, that still tune into the Eagles, as they should. Third and seven coming up for Lorenzen, who's run this offense. In a great way in the first half. I mean, they have done everything they've wanted. A little trouble pass to Taylor, wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. But Jared Bowie, one of those defensive ends, the core of that defensive line for South Florida on the hit. But UConn, pretty impressive with their numbers so far in the first. Well, and they've stuck to their blueprint. You know, offensively, not taking too many chances, even in the weather. You know, putting the ball in Tyler Lorenzen's hands. He may not be one of the flashiest quarterbacks in the country, but he sure takes care of the football, and he does not give you many breaks on defense. Marcus Edwards back awaiting the punt at his own 11. Desi Cullen standing on his side of midfield. So under two minutes here until the break. Randy Etzel, by the way, as they throw a flag, they're going to back him up a little bit. This is his 100th game at UConn. That's nice, subtle work of the clock. Possessing the football, just working that clock. Delay game. Number four in the offense. Time yard penalty. Remains fourth down. And Terry, when you watch this Randy Edsel team, they're 6 and 1, looking to go to 7 and 1. They've done an exceptional job of working and controlling the clock offensively throughout the season. Punt away. Edwards from the 12. Nifty move to get by one, but it closes quickly and out to the 17. He's a bit shaken up. Punt of 30 yards and a return of five. So South Florida trying to get something perhaps before the break. Timeout signal. We'll take a break as well. Amari Jackson gingerly walking off. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number 16, Tom Harmon. As a running back, quarterback, and kicker, Harmon led the nation in scoring in each of his final two college seasons. As a senior, he accounted for five touchdowns against Ohio State and became Michigan's first Heisman Trophy winner. IBM, getting it done. And the father of uh, actor Mark Harmon, as a matter of fact. Tom Harmon checking in at number 16. Number two and number one, as we counted all the way down, announced on New Year's Day on ABC. Heisman Trophy winner was also a pilot back in World War II. Awarded a Purple Heart and a Silver Star. Work to do for Grothy. A bit shaken up on that last series. Ben Williams is in there at tailback. They're going to give it off to Williams. Good pursuit by that, by that UConn defense as we've seen throughout the first half. Yeah, UConn loves to outman you. They're a 4-3 scheme. Four linemen along the front. Three linebackers behind. But they find a way to get an eighth man into the box. And then they play very soft defense behind. Yeah, running the ball, you're often going to be hanging banging your head against the wall and you've got to count on your quarterback to hit short medium range passes and just move the chains methodically. A couple of young guys at the outside linebacking spots for UConn. Grothy keeps it and a flag in the backfield as he takes it up to just about the 29. But Wilson and Mutris, retro freshman, Lance Santa, the veteran in, in the middle, they're going to bring this one back. Yeah, this has not been a good half of football for Jim Levitt and his team. You pop a nice run on second down. There's a yellow handkerchief on the ground, and you're being moved back 10 yards. Holding, 62 offense. 
half the distance to the goal. We play second down. So under a minute to go until halftime. And a reminder, you got the Capital One halftime report coming your way. John Saunders, Craig James, Doug Flutie, the guys will have all the highlights, including USC at Oregon, a big one in the Pac-10. Or in a, appears to be an elimination game, maybe, in the national title chase. And USC actually an underdog going into a game. Who would have thunk it? That's a bit of a surprise, but I'll tell you what, Oregon jumping five spots from ten up to number five in the BCS rankings. Back in a moment. Before we could get back, Matt Grothy brings it out across the 15 and almost to the 20. So a gain of eight for Grothy, who has struggled in the air, just four of eight for 40 yards, no touchdowns, and an interception so far for Grothy with uh, Lorenzen running the offense so far so well for UConn. It's a, it's a big chore ahead. They had to come back in the past. Of the, you wonder how they react to a, uh, to a loss. And we said that coming in, David, uh, first bit of adversity this year. And it hasn't been a positive thing for Jim Levitt and the Bulls so far. Well, and he come off a tough win or a tough loss, rather, last Saturday, uh, Thursday night. They had their opportunities down the stretch. I really felt like they had great chances to win that game against Rutgers, and I think that there's been a hangover. I don't think South Florida's shown up for this football game in the first half. And UConn, remember what Quinn Kesnick said to, to start the game. It should be you confident, and they are right now, and that's how Lorenzen has played so far. 125 yards, a touchdown, and interception. Both are really struggling here with just 40 yards. Certainly not looking like one of the better quarterbacks in the nation as he has at times this year. Taylor will keep it on the ground. Swarm behind the line. Not to do it for Jamar Taylor. Lance Santa again in the middle of the action. South so, Florida choosing to be very conservative. You make a mistake in your own end inside a minute to go and really going to be up against it going into the locker room. But UConn a chance to call another timeout. They're going to get it back here on the punt and maybe get something before halftime. Well, I think they were facing that prospect no matter which way they went with the play calling on the third down play. South Florida just has to be confident that they can get this punt executed. Get into the locker room trailing by 16. You got to really appreciate Randy Edsel keeping the pedal to the metal. Hey, how about Ohio State trying to stay unbeaten? Ranked number one of the BCS, taking you to Happy Valley. And Joe Paterno's number 25, Nittany Lions, Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines on ABC tonight at 8 Eastern. College football lives here. Last time Ohio State lost a regular season game was at Penn State. Larry Taylor, we're going to watch this one. Go to the 42, a punt of 40 yards and no return. So some thinking to do for Matt Grothy as we are 33 seconds away from halftime. And some work to do for the South Florida defense. This is a nice spot on the field. And Rob Ambrose, and this UConn offense can take a couple shots. And with Tyler Lorenzen, you know he's going to be safe with the football. He'll he'll take a sack here if he has to. He's not going to take any risks, but I think that UConn's going to take a shot at trying to get this football down in the field goal room. Out of the shotgun. Inside give to Dixon, so they keep it on the ground. Spins away, still up. Finally brought down at the 33. Alan Cray, the man who was shaken up earlier in the game, brought him down, saved the touchdown, but a gain of 25, they get there quickly. Yeah. And Huskies out of timeouts. They don't necessarily need to clock the ball here. I think they could run a play, but... A stoppage from the officiating crew. And as a guy who's run this before in college, a quarterback, you've seen some some teams mismanage the clock so far in college football this year. Well, we saw it with Matt Grothy last week, right, at trailing by three points on the last drive. They had the ball at the 49 yard line. First down, he takes a big sack, holds onto the ball too long, and then he gets back and he clocks the ball. He stops the clock on an incomplete pass on a second and 22 with a minute and 17 on the clock. I mean, the only time you ever want to clock the football is when the clock is down you know, inside 25 seconds and you don't have enough plays left to execute. Inside 25 seconds now. 
quick throw. He throws it to no one. Threw it away. Yeah, that's another instance of Lorenzen looking outside. A quick slant. A bit of a mix up with his wide receiver. And again, he's safe with the football. You know, at worst, when you get a Randy Edsel team, you know you're going to go into the locker room leading by 16, and they'll test you here and see if they can get a reasonable field goal attempt off. Levitt, not as animated as we've seen him on the sidelines. Certainly not as animated as last week at Rutgers on Thursday night. Lorenzen going up top. Jeffers is out there, well covered, though. Two defensive backs from South Florida there, including Trey Williams. He's going to talk a little bit on his way back to the huddle. Yeah, and Jeffers and Jeffers and Lorenzen wanted a flag there, but that ball was uncatchable. The ball was thrown out of the back of the end zone. So it brings up fourth down now, David. And this is the situation where I think Edsel might try a long field goal attempt, but you have to be careful. Remember what happened to Rutgers last week. Ito getting his attempt blocked and all the controversy that ensued. Tre on forward pass. Trevino's connected from 50 before, and this would be a 50 yarder. Good hold, good spot. Line drive and no good. So Grothy covers up the Mohawk. To go back to work. It's such an important game for both of these teams. Uh, South Florida in big trouble, in danger of getting a second Big East loss tagged on them. And Terry, I, I don't think West Virginia is going to be very vulnerable down the stretch. I think they have a chance at running the table. And if you're going to win this conference, I think you're only going to have one loss. I think this, too, is a shock to most people. Uh, Levitt's club here coming in and being down 16 to nothing at halftime. Uh, UConn, even with the validation game last week, the win over Louisville, many around the country still didn't believe. But Grothy has a lot of work to do to come back in the second half. 16 nothing UConn. UConn coming up after the break, the Capital One halftime report from New York. Welcome back as today's game is presented by Best Buy. Wrenchler Field here in East Hartford. Maybe the UConn fans aren't surprised, but uh, everybody else so far surprised that this defense is absolutely shut down South Florida. It's 16-0 at the half. Terry Gannon back with David Nori, Quinn Kesnick down on the field. So if you're growthy right now, you're trying to get something going offensively. What do you do on this first drive? They'll receive. Well, I think that this offense has to start work in the middle of the field using Jesse Hester. This has not been a very Matt Grothy-esque type of game. Four for eight in the first half, threw a pick the other way for a touchdown. They're going to have to get much more efficient in the pass game. And on defense, South Florida better start stopping the run. This is a defense that only gave up one 100-yard rusher in the prior 15 games before last Thursday night. Andre Dixon already over 100 yards in the first half of this game. You think UConn? is gaining believers as we go I mean so many people saying, oh they didn't play anybody and then last week they beat Louisville now they come here at home and they've got South Florida down 16 to nothing this is the number six defense in the nation and they win this doing with smoke and mirrors they win this football game and they'll have some believers in the Big East trust me Jerome Murphy back at his own eight trying to give him good field position to start the second half knocked out of bounds across the 35 Desi Cullen came up, made the hit as we check out our Pacific Life game summary. Remember, the game started with a torrential downpour and the two missed field goals by South Florida, one from 26 yards and one from 44 yards. It set the tone. Tyler Lorenzen doing some nice work, doing what he does best, a conservative pass game. That was a big play on the screen pass to Dixon, and then Dixon with his customary intensity and drive from the running backs position 16 yards in the game on the ground by Dixon and some more in the air on first down Cody Brown the defensive end applying the pressure on Matt Grothy oh, and if there is a ray of hope literally for South Florida it's the fact that the rain has let up now, this is the type of weather as opposed to early in the first half that Matt Grothy and this offense can enjoy 
and try to get some yards and some points and get back in this football game. The opening drive important for South Florida just to uh, make yourself believe you have a chance here. Carlton Mitchell over the middle and some tough yards after the catch across midfield as we send it down to Quinn Kesnick. Terry, I talked to Jim Levitt coming out of the locker room. He said, flat out, we are not playing University of South Florida football. One thing I've noticed on the sideline today, you don't see the same passion and fervor from that, that man right there, Jim Levitt. Usually you see the battling mentality, the, the fever, the passion. He loves his players. He loves to battle with them. And that has been absent on the sidelines. And David, to add on your point, conditions right now much, much better. It is breezy, obviously still cloudy. The field's still wet. But right now they're using dry footballs. Good time for some offense. So let me get this straight, Quint. Before it was pouring, you got no hat. Now it's beautiful and you put the hat on. I got multiple stuff down here. I, I, I had different jackets, uh, different hats. I got a lot of stuff. You saw that bag that I brought before yeah. the game. Yeah, it was very classy, the trash bag full of uh, rain gear that you brought to the sidelines. Mike Ford over the right side, just inside the 40-yard line. Uh, Quint Kesnick, one of our truly transient on-the-field reporters <laughs> in college football. Pretty nice afternoon right now, though. Not for uh, the South Florida team trying to come back, but the, the weather is broken. Rain has lifted. Yeah, this is a critical third down. South Florida has to continue to move the chains on this drive, and I would not be surprised if they're considering this four down territory. Five receiver set. Grothy out of the gun. Now runs it. Hit in the air. Dangerous. Incomplete. Almost picked off. Julius Williams was all over Matt Grothy. Well, Julius Williams along with Cody Brown two defensive ends that don't get a lot of publicity in the Big East but they made a difference late last week against Brian Brom you see Julius Williams tracking Grothy down from behind and this was just one count from another interception going the other way Alvarado's punt Larry Taylor back with a fair catch as he backs off South Florida roll all the way down inside the seven yard line and a punt of 34. If you're you're Levitt, you college football fans know his reactions well. This was last week. Yeah. <laughs> he was animated to say the least. And you know, Quint Kesnick talking about how calm and sedate he's been on the sidelines. He was fit to be tied last week. He actually told us this week, you know, I may have gone over the top a little bit on, on that one. And I plan <laughs> not to do the same thing this week. But, you know, you got to be yourself. And he's, he, as I say, you got to be a little crazy to, uh, to build a program from scratch, from nowhere, and take it to here. Make people believe that the program could go somewhere. Now we, Dixon on first down, David. <laughs> we talked to him on the phone on Wednesday. He said, yeah, I move around a little bit a little during bit. the game. They said, yeah, the 30-yard wind sprints before kick during calisthenics and uh, I like his intensity he took a couple knocks in the press uh, over the course of the week some writers thought that he was a little over the top but uh, South Florida that was a very bitter loss Dixon looking for room finds it cuts back should have a first down well a patient run from Andre Dixon and a gain of 10 this Husky offensive line is doing a super job up front. They're really getting a lot of work done on the South Florida side of the neutral zone. And they are just using physical play across the board and giving Andre Dixon some great daylight to work with. Younger at the skilled positions, but uh, some experienced offensive linemen. Not necessarily seniors, but experienced. Dixon to 20. There's a couple people across the 21, including Ben Moffitt, that middle linebacker who is the veteran, certainly the leader of this defense, and on the semifinalist list for the Buckus Award, one of the final 10 in the country. I think he is a tremendous prospect for the NFL to play at the next level, a four-year starter. When you talk to Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator for South Florida, he says he's the best that has ever played for him. Second down, Lorenzo. Play action. Nope. He won't go down. Finally, brought down back at the five. George Selvi add another one to the total. He was in on that. And a loss of 13. The top sack man in the country picks up 
another notch on his belt gets inside this is a guy that only got one division one offer coming out of high school Pensacola Florida he has got an NFL type bill he needs to fill out some but I think he's got the type of body as you look at his numbers leading the country in both sacks and tackles behind the line of scrimmage but he's got the type of body when he fills out he's going to play on Sunday and add one sack to that number that was his first tackle today as Dixon brings it out to the 14 Ben Moffitt in on the stop there but Selvi recruited as a center and you mentioned the one division one offer that was South Florida he was going to Delta State a division two school if he didn't go to Tampa and that last series by this bull defense was much more in tune with the way they've played over the last couple years and uh, critical that they get the ball back here with good field position. Marcus Edwards awaiting a good month from Cohen. Sends him all the way back and he drops the football. Falls on it back at the 34. And that's where they'll start when we come back. 47 yards on the punt. Almost lost it entirely for the Bulls. You are watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Ranchler Field here in East Hartford, built by the state, number one tenant, the Huskies. Been around since 2003, this stadium. So South Florida takes over first and 10 from their own 34. Dorothy, a design run, gets a block, springs him outside. Quarterback switches to the left hand as he crosses the 40 out to the 43. Dontavia Bogan, the wideout, getting a start for Torres Johnson, made the initial block. Well, this offense starts always with Matt Grothy. It's going to be a called quarterback draw. He's going to take a step or two back in the pocket, sell pass, and he is one of the better runners. They're not physically formidable, not a real blazing guy with his speed, but a great feel, and he has a nice ability to break tackles. Gain of nine, so second and one. He keeps it, going to throw over the middle. Got a man complete. Cedric Hill still up. First down and more for Hill, the tight end inside the 25. Now this is more like it. Uh, South Florida attacking the field. Hill's a big tight end. He can run like a wide receiver and he's going to get down the seam. It all starts up front here. Nice protection off the play action fake. And even with the defensive rush in his face, Grothy able to drop the ball in nicely to Hill. Gain of 35, and they wanted to get the tight ends more involved this afternoon. Haven't been able to really do it until that moment. Mike Ford in that tailback. Gets the handoff from Grothy. Falls ahead inside the 10, all the way down to the 8. And just like that, this offense has come along. Well, and I think UConn, with the pass call on the last possession, the sack against Lorenzen, you know, you, you got risk-reward, and... and had the ability to keep the ball on the ground. They're continuing to be aggressive on offense, but it gave South Florida the ball in good field position. And for the first time today, Matt Grothy able to mix run and pass. And for the first time, it looks like a confident offense and a confident quarterback. They blow it dead before he can hand it off to Ford. Looked like maybe some movement. Try the snap. Ball start. 78 offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. And that's what can grind a drive to a halt. Now we saw some quotes during the off days of the week. Hayden Fry even weighed in, the former that's Iowa right. coach, and said, you know, too many mistakes by South Florida in that critical game on Thursday night last week. A game where they're ranked number two in the country, and again. We see penalties become a problem. So 10 penalties in that game, of course, allowed the fake punt, fake field goal out of the backfield, swinging it out to Taylor, but well covered. Lutris in on the hit, and it was a hard one. Now Scott Lutris already with a touchdown under his belt in this football game, and we got to look at the way that this Husky defense pursues outside, and they're pretty physical as well. Now they will make ball carriers pay. They get to the ball quickly with numbers. So it's second and goal, and they spot it at the 12. Three receivers to the far side, two to the near. Brophy all by himself. 
over the middle, diving catch inside the five at the four. Dontavia Bogan coming back for it. His first catch today. Now this is a nice play by Bogan to lay out, secure the football. In the first half, Hester, the only wideout with a catch. Go ahead and roll it. Crossing action. Oh, what a nice play. Dontavia moves to the middle of the field at the last moment to give a nice picture to Matt Grothy. Third and goal. Grothy throws corner of the end zone. Picked off. Intercepted. Robert McClain timed it perfectly and then held on. Wow. Second interception of the year for the sophomore from Maryland, and Grothy just didn't get it high enough. Now, these are the type of throwing decision mistakes that are tough to recover from in this stadium against this defense. The Huskies, 16 picks coming into the game, two this afternoon, one return for a touchdown, and they snuff out a scoring drive by the Bulls. And they look for a big strike right away. Lorenzen flushed out under pressure, and down he goes. Guess who? George Selby's got another one. Good look at the foot speed of the sophomore from Pensacola. And the scouts travel the country, and they get into film rooms on campuses. And when you see these types of plays, these are the plays that scouts really, you know, really catches their attention. Selby from the backside. Look at the speed as he closes on Lorenzen all the way from across the field. Now he is a potential first rounder in the making. Loss of four on the sack and down he goes again. Fortunate to hang on to the football. Aaron Harris got him first. To a loss of 11 after the loss of four on the previous play. And the Huskies have done a pretty good job, Terry, of protecting their quarterback early in this football game. That's three sacks on the last two possessions. Richard Klebert, the man who was shaken up. His front four able to get pressure without blitz, without bringing an extra defender. A buoy on one side, and then you got the All American candidate in Selvey at the other defensive end and they are a load for offensive tackles on one on one blocks. You got the speed outside with Selvey and Bowie and then Cleaver the guy inside who stops the run at 312 pounds but out at least momentarily. So it's third and 25 you got to be a little careful here. That's why he's going to run it. Lorenzen hit hard at the 12. Jerome Murphy on the stop and brings up fourth and 18. South Florida defense has come out of the locker room. Two impressive possessions. And you know, to be truthful, last Thursday night, I thought that the defense, even though they gave up a lot of yards to Ray Rice, they gave up a lot of first downs and points, they gave this offense several chances to win down the stretch. Cullen under pressure, it's blocked. Into the end zone and a UConn player on it. So the safety after the block Douglas celebrating Murphy celebrating and points on the board for South Florida now South Florida missed an excellent opportunity for a touchdown they had the ball covered and they were not able to make the recovery in the end zone and they had at least two shots yeah they had the best shot at it initially but the pressure comes there's the block from Murphy right through the hands and two points on the board This presentation of college football brought to you by IBM. What makes you special? DLP HD TV. DLP is the official ESPN on ABC HD telecast sponsor of college football. And the Nissan Titan. Proud presenter of the 2007 Heisman Trophy. To cast your vote, go to theheismanvote.com. A few days away from trick or treat time. Pumpkin patch here in the area. East Hartford. Hi, buddy. Jerome Murphy, the man who blocked the punt. Remember, that really doesn't happen without the sacks that put them back there initially and the opportunity to back them up. 
a golden opportunity missed. Could have had a touchdown. There's Murphy coming back across the 35 out to the 37. Take a look at our best buy playbook, David. And you're playing the wing as a protector on that. You want to make sure that you get the danger that comes from the inside. The block comes against the outside defender, and Jerome Douglas is able to come inside. Actually, it's Jerome Murphy is able to come free inside, get the block. And then Dylan Douglas with an excellent opportunity just couldn't quite cover the football in the end zone. But South Florida in the second half, a lot of positives. That one wasn't one of them. That's incomplete. Nowhere near the intended receivers. We send it to Matt Weiner in the studio. All right, Terry, a lot of positives for West Virginia today, which makes Pat White our nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week. He ran it for 156, threw it for 144. That's 300 yards total offense, keeping the Mountaineers very much in that crowded national title picture. Text vote date 7654 in your AT&T wireless phone to vote the chance for that national championship game. All right, Matt, and they got some quarterbacks in the Big East who can run with the football, including this man right here. But he's still up. Got a chance. Down the sideline. Knocked out near the 10. Dana Delliston ran him down. A gain of 53, though. South Florida starting to put together some impressive plays and play calls. And you get a look at just how slippery Matt Grothy can be. Very strong with his lower body. Watch the move he lays on Lutris. Just gets rid of the young linebacker and then flashes some speed. Just saw White running for West Virginia. Now Grothy again is going to keep it to the end zone. Touchdown, South Florida. You go for one here. So they had the long drive, pretty quick drive the last time, and were stopped as Grothy threw the interception in the end zone. And emotionally, you wonder, well, what, how's that going to affect them after a positive drive? They come straight back, and it's all Grothy this time. Alvarado on for the extra point. And good. So he does it with his arm, but he does it with his legs throughout the season, and especially on this drive. To the end zone goes Grothy. We got a game. Difficult first half for Grothy and the Bulls, but they've come back with nine points here in the third quarter. So 16 to 9 after the safety and then the drive. It happened just like that. It was over before you knew it. Three plays, 63 yards, and just 29 seconds off the clock. Squib fielded at the 32 and back out to the 39. Rouse, the tight end, bringing it back. We finally look forward to Mondays because at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, ABC brings you the number one comedy on television. Christina Applegate stars as the good girl who loses her memory and discovers she's had a bad past. It's the season's biggest hit. Samantha Who, all new Monday at 9.30, 8.30 Central, right after Dancing with the Stars on ABC. And David, they tell me it'll make you feel better about the weekend being over. <laughs> and I believe it. I have a bad pass, but it has nothing to do with the memory. <laughs> and you remember most of it. <laughs> Dixon. All right, time for this offense now to go to work. And uh, here in the second half, it's been all South Florida. Well, remember, Dixon did much of the work in the first, but Selvi again in on the tackle, and he's been huge so far. Yeah, the difference in the second half has been the South Florida defense. They really didn't answer the wake-up call in the first half. UConn was able to run the ball effectively. Dixon had 115 yards at half, but the Bulls have been tough here after the break. Lorenzen, they set up the screen to Dixon. Run down by Moffitt. Look at the speed of Ben Moffitt. Uh, this play had a great chance. It's had a great chance of popping down the sideline. And watch Moffitt, the middle linebacker. Now let's go ahead and freeze it right here. That's Moffitt right here making a great layout tackle. And he 
is a sideline to sideline guy runs exceptionally well for his size. Donald Brown now in at tailback. They fake it to him. Lorenzen to throw over the middle. Complete. Karen Jeffers with the catch. Still up. Finally brought down. He's got a first down. Terrence Jeffers with his first catch this afternoon. Before that play, a little different attitude on the sideline for South Florida, Quint. Yeah, Terry, a noticeable change in emotion down here, field level. South Florida body language, much, much, much more positive. The position coach is really coaching the kids up. Meanwhile, I'm on the UConn sideline right now. Doubt setting in, players glancing at the scoreboard. Randy Etzel, you can see the tension on his face. Student section on their feet, but they've been pretty quiet. Well, it's certainly time to be a little worried because the first half was all UConn in this a turn of events here in the second half. Lorenzen changes the play at the line. Quick sidestep and then Dixon straight through the hole. He reads that well. They got some patience, reads the, the blockers and where the holes open up. Well, he's had an opportunity to start a few games consecutively. We talked about the fact that this is the fourth game out of the last six that he's gone over the hundred yard mark but he does have great patience and I love his motor I and mean, he gives you great effort great intensity on every carry 140 yards so far this afternoon gotta respect that play fake then dropped at the 30 Lorenzen tried to drill it in to Larry Taylor <laughs> Taking a look at the numbers and Dixon getting some great work between the tackles. 25 carries and we're still in the third quarter. He is a workhorse back. That's a little bit of everything. They set him up with the screens as well. Got a couple of catches this afternoon. UConn has a, has a great screen game and the South Florida coach is really worried about it coming into this game. There he is, as we call his name, and a first down for the Huskies. This guy's getting bluer for UConn here in the second half after the gain of 12. Especially after that throw by Lorenz, and that's not an easy throw with a ball that's you know, not quite as slick as it was in the first half, but still you know, the feel and the hand on the football for the quarterback is questionable from snap to snap, and he put it right on the money to Dixon. Certainly much better than it was, though. If you joined us as we came on the air, it was a downpour. And expected to last throughout much of the game, but it hasn't. Dixon tripped up at the 22 by Carlton Williams, the junior from Georgia, and the strong safety. So now the South Florida defense being tested, this lengthy drive by UConn. And South Florida really has to answer the bell, especially after getting the touchdown. But this, this UConn Husky, oh, Carlton Williams. Oh. The safety is going down suddenly. That's who made the tackle. And wow. They, they work on him. It looked like he was trying to get to the sidelines and just collapsed. This is scary. Now he's moving. He's moving around, though. That's obviously a positive sign. It, it, it was odd the way it happened. He seemed to be just coming off the field and a bit shaken up and went down. We talked to the defensive staff for the Bulls, and he's been a real unsung hero. A safety that can line up and play some cornerback and nickel. You see number 32 there. And he gets up right away. Looks fine. And he's walking off and decides, okay, yeah, he knew we'll take this one off. Wrong. He knew something was wrong. And then does not make it to the sideline. And he wondered, was that a, could have been a blow to the head. Looks like he was just. Might have been dazed from a helmet to helmet kind of hit. And at least sitting up now and they get him off the field. Walking off the field, but I tell you, it takes some kind of courage to strap on a helmet, put on the pads, and play the game of football, especially at this level. 
the collisions, the speed, and the size of these young athletes. The kids get bigger and faster each year. Now we take it for granted, but I think a lot of a, if a lot of high school kids would come to one college practice. It's an eye opener. Yeah, you have a different uh, reception. Dixon squirts through inside the 15 down to the 13. Shakes his head, bounces back up, rushing back to the huddle. Uh, they're, they are getting it done on the ground against one of the better defenses against the run over the last two seasons. And Terry, when we look back to last Friday night, it was this offensive line and Andre Dixon that took a hold of the football game late against Louisville. And it looks like they're starting to get it rolling again. Uh, South Florida gives up 115 yards a game on the ground. And uh, Dixon went past that himself in the first half. First and ten. Guess who gets the call again? Gets it to the ten. Moffitt the first to greet him. Uh, it's tough to get an extra man up near the line of scrimmage. Try to outnumber the blockers for UConn because Tyler Lorenz and you know with Rob Ambrose's play calling, they haven't been afraid to put the football up. You know at times I I think they've been a little bit liberal in terms of dropping Tyler Lorenz and back, but you can't take too many chances outside. Under two minutes until the fourth. An impressive drive for the Huskies thrown away by Lorenzo. And for both of these schools, because of where the programs came from, Levitt turning it all around and creating it, and um, being ranked 10th in the country. But UConn also, a Division I AA to 1A, and Randy Etzel, where he's taking the program almost every game and almost every big play now, you can say, that this might be the biggest play in the school's history yeah, because they've never been in this position before. I guarantee you there are some fans that opened up their newspapers this week and said, what, 23rd in the BCS, Connecticut? 11th play of the drive over the middle, contact in the end zone, incomplete. Defender has a right to the football as well. Yeah, Nate Allen making an exceptional play. Now, this is a turning point in the football game. If UConn is able to punch that ball into the end zone and Nate Allen the free safety a very talented player who's been a little bit short on confidence and I'll tell you what Oof. South Florida very lucky that looked like pass interference to me he lowered that shoulder didn't he and as you said Terry he's got a right to the football but not to impede the wide receiver on his route Drive from 27 yards up and good Trevino connects and adds three more on the board that'll pump up Levitt on that side I'm trying to get the troops going and so offense still on his nineteen nine Connecticut up on South Florida as number 10 meets number 23 don't forget four races to go in the chase and teammates Jimmy Johnson Jeff Gordon battling down to the wire last week it was Johnson edging out his teammate for a win and now they go to Atlanta tomorrow on ABC the chase for the NASCAR Nextel Cup at 1 Eastern beginning with NASCAR countdown getting down to the wire with the NASCAR boys back deep Gilliam and Jerome Murphy after the field goal for Connecticut and a and really an impressive drive that turned the momentum or at least stopped the momentum for a while. And South Florida had 12 plays, 51 yards. Drive. Gilliam lost his footing, backtracks, spins out to the 17. So Grothy takes over again. We saw how great he was with his feet on that last drive. Well, and, and the South Florida defense gave up quite a few yards on that last drive, but to hold UConn to three points and get the ball back in Matt Grothy's hands, I, I, Terry, I feel like Matt Grothy is starting to get his rhythm. He's been explosive in the second half. He did make the mistake on the pick in the end zone, but South Florida is right back in this football game. Mike Ford, the tailback, out with Grothy in the backfield. Four receiver set on first and ten from the 18. Hill, the tight end in motion. And flags before they get it off. Prior to snap, false start. 61 offense. Five yard penalty remains first down. 
the headset hasn't been thrown to the ground yet. UConn crowd into it. Husky fans wanting to stop here. First and 15 for Brophy over the middle to his tight end. Tough catch in traffic for Cedric Hill. And a gain of 12. That was a high degree of difficulty catch. And Matt Grothy squeezing the ball into a tight space. Sometimes you have to go ahead and drive the ball down the field to your tight end, even when he doesn't give you a great look and a lot of separation. And Hill more of a tight end slash wide receiver. He's got some speed. He goes 6'3", 230. He's a hybrid. Contact was their movement first. Dan Davis came across. Jake Griffin, the man who he made contact with. Did Griffin move? Try the snap. Offside. Contact on the defense. Five yard penalty. First down. It's not looking offsides because he came across intentionally making contact, it looked like, as if he saw someone move. Yeah, Dan Davis you know, flinching, a guy who was a real key move for this defense, moving Dan Davis uh, down inside. Uh, there's the movement just to get into position. Number six, former defensive end. Play action, Grothy throws on the run, sliding catch over the middle made. Marcus Edwards, a nifty grab. Out at the 47, his first catch. And Matt Grothy, you see him moving around, scrambling, creating plays from outside the pocket, faking the underneath handoff, faking the zone read play. And he has a gift of throwing the ball on planned routes, dropbacks, half roll to his right. That was a nice ball. That's pretty good touch on that ball. Absolutely. They give it to Ford, finds a hole across midfield to the 47. And the offense certainly doing things they didn't do in the first half. Well, when we talked to UConn and, and their defensive coaching staff, they said everything about this South Florida offense is based on Matt Grothy. We have to contain him. And we talked to Danny Lansana, the middle linebacker. All he talked about was containing Matt Grothy. Not doing a very good job here in the second half. Thank you. He's got some uh, intensity on that sideline. Got a feeling there's a lot left in this one as we head to the fourth. The block almost had a touchdown. 19-9. UConn. We're back with more after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Nineteen to nine UConn with the lead as we head to the fourth so David Norrie 15 minutes of football that in many ways will tell the tale for the seasons USF top 10 ranking would be out the window with a loss UConn trying to win the Big East maybe go to a BCS bowl. especially with how impressive West Virginia was earlier today in the win against Rutgers I think a team that's going to threaten to win the Big East has got to have at the very least one loss at the end of the season. Grothy keeps it across the 40 to the 38, and that's been the method the last couple of drives. There you see the standings, and UConn the only undefeated team in the Big East. West Virginia, big win today over Rutgers, and you've got then South Florida trying to get to 2-1. and one. Yeah, and, and, and you'd love to finish the Big East schedule undefeated if you're UConn, and you walk to a BCS spot. But I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, I don't see a two-loss team winning the Big East the way that West Virginia has it rolling right now. Ford the carry bounced around to the 37. If you're South Florida too, I mean you got the number two in the country before last week's loss and the entire country was talking about you. You had people excited about the program, people taking notice of the program who hadn't before for Jim Levitt. And so two straight losses does a lot of damage to them. Oh, it does a lot of damage not only to your number 10 BCS ranking but also to your prospects of winning the Big East championship out of the gun second and seven Grothy connects inside the 30 there's the tight end Cedric Hill with another catch he's got three of those this afternoon and here's our Pacific Life game summary second half Matt Grothy has really turned it on and it's reflected in the passing yards for South Florida only 40 yards through the airways in the first half 
You look at the penalty, seven penalties for 59 yards. Tough for any offense to overcome. Offensively, South Florida really picking up the tempo, too, in this second half. A little bit of a hurry up. Well, as a defense, really difficult when Matt Grothy gets that combination of running and passing ramped up. So that is a first down for the Bulls. When you look across the country, there aren't many playmakers like a Matt Grothy. Rookie of the year in the Big East a year ago, and when he's at his best, he's escaping the pocket. They're running planned run plays for him, and he's throwing the ball with confidence. And I think this Connecticut defense has got to be a bit worried the way that Matt Grothy is playing with confidence right now. Grothy's got 80 yards rushing in the second half alone. Jamar Taylor late to come onto the field. Grothy called over for him. High snap, and they give it to Taylor. Now that play was doomed from the start. Barely gets out there, and then well read. Ivan Branch along with Cody Brown. Now this is a zone read play, and Matt Grothy is going to go ahead. And what he's going to do is he's going to read the defensive end. If he comes up field, he's going to give the ball to the running back. If he comes flat, then he keeps the ball himself. Watch the defensive end. Stays in position. And the read and the give to his young running back. Vince Young do a little damage with that play? Oh, uh, Vince Young and Pat White, never better quarterbacks in college football at running that play. Grothy, quick drop, throws. Hester can't get there. Well covered. There he is, Butler, right there with him. Uh, speaking of Vince Young, we look at the defensive end. He's going to come flat, and guess who keeps the ball on this play? Reads the defensive end, steps up, and like we've seen so many times. Well, the thing about Vince, though, I mean, you could have three defenders there, and he'd still beat you. Yeah, uh, he was able to make one or two defenders miss, even if you didn't get it blocked. Big third down. Protection for Grothy. Hit, though, as he throws. Ball is loose. They're scrambling for That's incomplete. Got to be a, yeah, it is. Cody Brown got his arm in there. That was a late call, but ruled that his arm was moving forward when the ball came loose. Yeah, the officials took a while to signal that, and that's why everyone kept scrambling. So Alvarado on for a try from 47 yards. Remember the misses early. Right into the student section. Very nice this time. Three more on the board for South Florida as they get closer to within a touchdown. The hit on Grothy is arm clearly starting to come forward. I guess. Jim Levitt doing some talking on the sideline. His team closer but still down by a touchdown as we went to break I said clearly the arm was coming forward before taking that closer look and I'm not sure it was so clear that that wasn't a fumble and we'll look at it in a moment on Grothy that was ruled an incomplete pass and eventually got they got the field goal I think Matt Grothy and his offense got a real break there and they picked up three points Taylor from his own five one of the more dangerous return men in terms of yards, second best in Big East history. Total yards. Well, take a look at this now. Yeah, it's a third down play, and this ball is starting to come loose before that arm comes forward. I think that is definitely a fumble, but this is, was not a mistake by the replay officials upstairs. The mistake was made by the officiating crew with a very late call, and they blew this play dead. Once you blow it dead, it's not reviewable. Well, you knew the arm was coming forward and in full speed watching it live action it looked like it certainly was 
an incomplete pass, but that, I don't think he had control when he was coming forward. Dixon runs into a stout defensive line right at the line of scrimmage. Well, at, and at the NFL level, they've had a lot of problems with that type of play over the years, and they've changed the rules over the last yep. year or two. They've told the referee and the officiating crew to hold the whistle in any gray area situations, a quarterback, whether his hand is coming forward or not, and then they sort it out after the ball is recovered, and I think that's you know what what the college game needs to work towards uh, when they review those types of plays. Dorothy all by himself on the sideline right now. Quick throw out to Hernandez who goes down to get it. And at the 23, Carlton Williams who was shaken up. Remember he collapsed going to the sideline. He's back in now, so that's good. And the key to get those kinds of calls right is to give the review officials upstairs a chance to review them, and they can't review that call unless. You know, the ball is ruled live and not an incomplete pass on the initial call. They'll blow the whistle before this one gets underway. Rolling on the field is under review. Yeah, so they can take a look at whether or not DJ Hernandez made that catch. The ball was low from Lorenzen. Whose family uh, back in Iowa is in the soybean business. Wants to save the world in a couple of years, and he, he means it. Well, this review clearly not a high impact play, regardless of which way it's ruled. And it looked to me like he clearly kept the ball off the turf. This looks like a catch to me. Hey, he had the hand underneath. Well. And we'll see what they say. They continue to take a look, and while they do, we'll send it back to Matt Weiner. Just enough time for this Sports Center Minute, powered by Vizio. Preakness winner Curlin Cruz to the winner's circle at the $5 million Breeders' Cup Classic. Robbie Alvarado was aboard as Curlin beat hard spun, paid out $10.80. And USC is effectively, and you know, for all intents and purposes, out of the national title hunt. Matt Sanchez was picked off by Matthew Harper late to put it away for the Oregon Ducks who will face Arizona State next. All right, I'm going to give my partner some props here because early on this season, he said that Oregon was going to beat USC. All right, that's not a great prognostication. I mean, but you also picked Curlin, so congratulations. Didn't bet on him, though. <laughs> After review, ruling on the field stands. Completed catch, turn down. I wish I would have. That's you no good, but you feel good about yourself. <laughs> exactly. All right, so he makes the, it's a one-yard gain, so you take a take a long time to uh, decide a one-yard gain, and it's I guess big, it could make a big difference. But you know, it's a big day for me picking the Aflac right and picking the winner of the class. Should be hard to work with next week. <laughs> All right, flags on this play. Ball start. 64 offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. William Beatty, the junior from York, Pennsylvania. And Terry, you know how unusual it is for me to get an Aflac right. First time for everything, my man. Yeah, friends down in the truck, Bart Fox, our producer, they, they throw brain teasers at us on those. I like to go back to the 40s and the 50s. On those. You didn't have some inside uh, information on that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Selby jump, they throw the flag, and Lorenzen throws it away. George Selby appeared to jump the count. Offside. 95 defense, five-yard penalty, third down. So this is some drive here as they take forever to take a look at the uh, the one-yard gain, and now a couple of penalties back to back, and so they push it up five yards near the conclusion of today's game. By the way, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, as they always do for many years. Lorenzen throws into traffic. Almost picked off. It wasn't incomplete. Three different officials come in saying incomplete, but Jenkins almost had it. Yeah, this slouched floor to secondary 
renowned for breaking on the football. Jenkins, he has the ability to be someday be a first round pick and oh so close to coming up with a big turnover and a short field for Matt Grothen. So Marcus Edwards back awaiting the punt of Cullen. They remember the safety that could have been a touchdown and they've had a couple of near picks. And run in over in. Here comes Edwards tripped up. But good field position for South Florida inside Yukon territory. And Grothy going back out there, chin strap on, helmet on, and ready to go. Yeah, nice play by Edwards to make that punt return on the run. And we look at Matt Grothy today, first half, very dismal, 40 yards through the air. He's really gotten things clicking in the second half. I like the play calls from Greg Gregory, the offensive coordinator. They've been able to feature Grothy with his run and pass skill. And they'll start first and 10 from the 47 of UConn. Out of the gun. Play action, throws complete. Threw it right between defenders. And number 81, Dontavia Bogan with the catch. A big gain of 22. Anybody that doesn't think that Matt Grothy has some arm strength, now we've heard some comments, and I think it's way too early and way over the top. But there have been a couple coaches that have said that he's a bit of a poor man's Joe Montana. You know, he doesn't have a huge arm, but great timing and just enough arm strength to make all the throws across the field. Grothy keeps it, falls down. Right at the line of scrimmage, maybe a loss of one. And the field's still a bit slippery from the earlier rain that we had in the first half. See, Grothy still with the towel, and Lorenzen's had that towel throughout as well. Nearing the 10 minute mark here in the fourth. Design run. He's got a big hole. Grothy cuts back inside the 15, down to the 12. Gain of 13 for Matt Grothy as South Florida, ranked number 10 in the nation, takes on number 23, UConn. And coming off a loss last week to Rutgers, UConn a big win over Louisville, the heart of the season, and first place in the Big East on the line. Grothy trying to bring the Bulls back. They've been down through most. Well, all of this game, as a matter of fact, it was 16 to nothing at the half. And South Florida getting the gear, offense in gear in the second half, doing much better here moving the football, David. Yeah, it's been a tale of two halves. Matt Grothy having a very subpar first half, especially throwing the football. Had a pick return for a touchdown. But he is playing like the playmaker that we've seen over the last two years here in the second half. Knocking on the door now. Second and eight, four. Back up tailback straight into the hole. Mike Ford, the freshman from Sarasota. Rob won the initial hit. Some pressure up front in that defensive line for UConn. Looking at some of the key plays early in the football game. Andre Dixon over 100 yards at halftime, showing some breakaway ability. Grothy throws an interception that's returned for a touchdown by Lutris. And then Grothy on the quarterback draw getting the comeback underway. Key third down for South Florida complete and drilled at the three yard line. So they go over the middle to Jesse Hester whose dad played for Florida State and then in the NFL. Uh, Hester really a super play. He knew the contact was coming. Grothy continuing to throw the ball on the money but this is not an easy catch. Now, first things first, the priority is to hold on the football, and he got the nice depth to move the chain. Well, you know you're going to get popped as soon as you catch it. So it's first and goal from the two. Three in the backfield. They come this way, trying to get outside, and does. But there's a flag on the play. Mike Ford gets to the end zone, but there's a flag back at the five. And it's a holding call. Jim Levitt asking who a couple holding calls last week on Thursday night against Rutgers were just murderous. Number nine on the offense. Ten yards from line of scrimmage. We play first time. So they had ten, 10 penalties in that game and they have ten penalties here against UConn today. Yeah, keep an eye on the left side of the screen. Big left tackle. Looked like Jared Carnes struggling getting a hold of the jersey. Wow that is a 
tough mistake on a play that could have tied the game, Terry. Yeah, first and goal, but they're backed up at the 12 now. Out of the gun, designed running play for Grothy. Can't get around the corner. Dropped at the 10. Robert Vaughn, the free safety. Ran him out there. This is the UConn defense that's number six in the nation. They don't give you much. They've been tough against that run. First half, they were terrific. Never really allowed this offense to get going at all. That's a defense that only gives up 12 points a game. They're six in the country in total yards against. Levitt trying to get his troops going here. Time to throw to the end zone. Incomplete. Contact and no call there. Hester the intended. Uh, now, Levitt saying, hey, you got hit. Yeah, and I think Jim Levitt might have a case here. He has had a tough time with the officials over the last two ball games, and this is a critical play. In case you can't hear him, he's showing you. Throw the flag. Uh, Jesse Hester continuing to work the middle of the field. I'll tell you what, that was a good no call. That was a good no call. It was timed up perfectly from the secondary. The crew got that one right. Yeah, Dana Delliston, the strong safety on the coverage, timed it perfectly. Out of the gun, Brophy. Throws to the corner of the end zone, incomplete. They had a chance. Cedric Hill, the intended, may have gotten tipped a little bit, but it went right through his hand. Brophy trying to put a little air under this ball, dropping it into Hill, and it did not look. Yeah, I don't think so. It didn't look like Robert Vaughn got a piece of that football. I think Hill was just distracted by the swipe with the arm that's an opportunity that goes by the boards and how about the holding call huge they had first and goal from the two now with 27 yard try for Alvarado who's had his troubles but hit one a few moments ago and has got this one so three more on the board USF getting closer first and goal from the two and they just come away with three four point game This presentation of college football brought to you by Best Buy. For a complete home theater experience, get HD done right at Best Buy. Jeep. With seven Jeep vehicles, there's one for you. Verizon Wireless. And Principal Financial Group. We'll give you an edge. 737 left here. Rensselaer Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. UConn. Number 23, up 19-15 over South Florida. First place in the Big East on the line. Yeah, looking back at that big holding call on the touchdown that was called back, South Florida. Officially, the call went against the tight end, Cedric Hill, for South Florida. Time on Branch, bringing it back across the 30. Spins his way, still up. Hard to bring down in great field position for UConn on a drive right now where they'd like to get some points up, but they'd like to take some time off the clock. Well, and South Florida cuts the lead to four points. You cannot give up a kickoff return all the way out to midfield. That was not a good job by the South Florida special teams unit. So now the offense comes out for UConn. You've got a guy in Andre Dixon who's carried it 29 times for 155 yards. So it really changes your play calling ability here. You can take some chances because you're not backed up against your own goal line. Tyler Lorenzen, the transfer from Palomar Junior College and from Iowa State connects. Inside the 15 down to the 14 yard line, DJ Hernandez with a big catch and run, 38 yards. If you're starting this drive on your own 20, your own 25, you're worried about turnovers, you might not take the shot down the field off play action. DJ Hernandez set it up with a beautiful move inside, really sold the dig route, the crossing route, and then cut it back to the middle of the field on the scene. Third catch for Hernandez today. How nice was the pass, too? Dixon trying to turn the corner. Andre Dixon. Close to the five. Carlton Williams knocked him out and saved the touchdown. Andre Dixon doing a tremendous job. It looked like he was headed out of bounds. He has exceptional cutting ability. This time the cut comes late and he stays in bounds. He has been such a catalyst 
for this Connecticut offense. All right, so much for taking some time off the clock. <laughs> Just like that, they're down at the five. Well, and again, you get the ball out near midfield, you can go ahead and utilize play action on obvious rundowns. You know, and you you're not worried about Tyler Lorenzen taking a sack so much. And they measure. Yeah, there you go. First and goal from the five. 0 and 10, the Huskies are all time versus ranked opponents. Go back six years, they weren't even playing Division 1A college football. And Randy Etzel, you talk to him right now. He said, Look, I'm, I'm not trying to be tried, not trying to be coy. We don't really have stars, but we have a great team. It's a team concept, and somehow, some way, the chemistry has come together. And I'm having more fun this year than ever before as a coach. Dixon straight ahead, maybe to the four. And this could be the game on the line right here. South Florida being able to stop UConn inside the five yard line. The game may rest on whether South Florida can force a field goal attempt. They'd love to pick up a turnover. And it's going to be interesting to see if UConn uses a fake in the backfield and gets Lorenzen a run pass option. Anthony Davis, the fullback, just ahead of Andre Dixon. Dixon jumps up, spins down close to the three. So, so far, so good for this defense. Bruce Mom Premier, first year starter at outside linebacker on the hit. That was a nice play by Mom Premier, keeping his inside out leverage and playing Dixon. Dixon is a load and finishes off his runs with a lot. A physical activity keeps those legs churning. South Florida will burn a timeout. So Levitt will talk things over with his defense and with just under six left here in East Hartford, third and goal coming up for UConn when you return. Watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Biggest play of the game so far coming up right here. What do you like, David? I think they keep the ball in Tyler Lorenzen's hands. Either a planned run to Lorenzen or a play action fake and giving him the run pass option. Dixon in motion and they'll throw the flag. Yeah, this is going to be a five yarder against Connecticut. All right, it's now. False start. I'm ready on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. So Jeffers the wide out with the movement. Yeah, and inexcusable because Jeffers is a spread position player. You got to be looking and watching the football. That's the biggest play of the game. And a big difference between third and goal on the three as opposed to third and goal on the eight. I think now with Lorenzen, there's no play action fake. The threat here, he's got to drop back and throw the football. Out of the gun, Lorenzen. Dixon out of the backfield. Lorenzen's going to run down to the three. So back near where they were, and it brings up fourth and goal. Now that was a nice job by the defensive front for South Florida to keep their awareness level high on Lorenzen. Now they know that Lorenzen is a big, strong runner, and they were able to close things down. Selvi and Bowie closing things down and making the tackle inside the five. Trevino on for a try from 20 yards. Penalty was big there though. It takes you right out of it. Plan play come out of a timeout. Backs you up. Trevino got another one. And the junior from Boca Raton, Florida playing against South Florida. And that's three on the afternoon for him. 22-15 your score. South Florida not out of it. with the play of the ageless Brett Favre, the NFL's all-time touchdown passer, takes on a quarterback of the future in Jay Cutler of the Broncos. The Packers in the Mile High City kick off at a special time, 8.05 Eastern, on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Yeah, so the Pat busy weekend in Denver, huh? But uh, Brett Favre leading the way for the Packers, rejuvenated this year. The question, Mr. Nori, is when is Favre going to return? <laughs> That's a question that people have been trying to answer for the last three or four years. Some people are getting tired of that question. I think, you know, 
when he retires, he retires. You just go ahead and announce it. But when is he going to retire? Good question. Murphy bringing it back. Reverses field out across the 35 to the 37. And we send it to Matt Weiner in the studio. All right, Terry, Georgia and Florida are going to come down to the wire in Jacksonville. It appears Tim Tebow, one of the more productive rushing quarterbacks in the country because of sacks, has technically been held to minus 21 yards rushing. But there you see his second rushing touchdown of the day. Five-point game there after the two-pointer fails to go. Michigan, by the way, has now won seven in a row. They retained the little brown jug by beating Minnesota. Everybody won Lloyd out. Well, not amazing. It's been that way for the last five years or so since they lose one, but lose the first two and run off the table seven in a row. Dump it over the middle to Ben Williams, the junior from Lake Wales, Florida. Scott Lutris on a hard hit. He's the man who had the interception, brought it back for a touchdown early on in this game, the fourth time that's happened for UConn this year. Yeah, we mentioned he was a running back in high school, and those skills really are evident at his outside linebacking position. Very good in space. Second down, Rothy over the middle, threads it through, and he couldn't hold on. Bogan had it and went right through his hands. Wow, and, and you get the drop in the end zone from Hill. This is a perfect ball to Bogan. You got to make this play for Matt Grothy. He's playing his heart out. He has really stepped up here in the second half. How did he even get that ball through? That was a beautiful ball and right on target. So third down as he operates out of the gun again. High snap. Inside given a first down. Williams bursting through. Inside the 35, all the way down close to the 33 of UConn. A gain of 22 before Robert Vaughn knocked him out. I think they ought to give Ben Williams more carries. You know, he is the one back on this team that is solid in all his assignments. Uh, just a violent pass protector. He'll step up and hit you in the chops if you come on a blitz. No bigger run this year for Ben Williams than that play, ripping off a big gain down the left sideline. Five carries, 27 yards. For Williams, Grothy by far the leading rusher on this team in this game and uh, over the course of the season. Hester the catch at the 30, knocked out. That's the sixth catch. He's been busy. Don't you love the patience of Grothy? You know, a lot of quarterbacks would get greedy on this type of drive, try to take chances down the field, and Grothy, a lot of discipline to just drop that ball off on a first down and look at a second and seven. Saying they won't get another opportunity, 426, but this is the drive. Down by a touchdown. Grothy designed run again. Loves that play. Close to a first down. Gain of seven. Rob one tripped him up. And they'll probably measure here. A couple missed opportunities. This South Florida team trailed 16 zip at half. Grothy got that drive rolling early in the third quarter but the pick in the end zone stalled the drive and then Cedric Hill a holding call that negates a touchdown that would have tied this game yeah Hill a couple of tough plays on that drive near the goal line because he had that penalty and then remember he dropped it in the end zone the corner of the end zone so missed it by that much I think again with Matt Grothy and his athletic ability, his toughness, even though he isn't a big quarterback, you really got to keep the ball in his hands here on a sneak. Don't give the defensive line an opportunity to penetrate. Grothy has a nice feel on these quarterback keepers. He's a gamer, finds a way to beat you most times. Third and inches. going to keep it and the leg drive going to have the first down so it'll be first down at about the 22 as the clock stands at 414 and UConn playing their conservative style in the secondary they're allowing Grothy to hit some balls underneath they're trying to out Manny up front in the run game but this offensive line for South Florida has been pretty good dealing with that eighth defender grothy has got to be real careful not to turn the ball over. And Hank Hughes, the assistant head coach in charge of the defense, as they pound it straight into the line. Not much going on there at all. Mike Cox, the backup defensive end, in for Julius Williams right now on the hit, along with one. 
and UConn not quite as good this afternoon. Now they came into this game number six in the country, giving up yards, third in the country, only giving up 12 points a game. But South Florida, especially in the second half, rolling up the yardage. Second and ten, play action. Brophy goes down. Almost slipped it, but Cody Brown made sure he hung on. Loss of five. And last week, Grothy had some big problems, some mental mistakes, holding on to the ball too long. Oh, and he pumped. It looked like he had a look down the field, but saved the throw. And if you do that in that situation, I think you got to start moving back towards the line of scrimmage. Remember last week, Terry, down three yep. against Rutgers on Thursday night. The South Florida team had a first down at the 49, and on first down, Grothy took a big sack. Yeah, it tends to, to hang on to it. Many times can make something out of that, but on key drives, you know, it can come back to haunt you. Greg Gregory. The offensive coordinator for South Florida when he talked to us on the call on Wednesday he said he had seven sacks last week four of them were attributed to growth he holding off so 317 it's third and 15 in just a moment first we go to John Saunders in New York though John well Terry you just want to remind everyone as you watch Anthony Morelli get off the bus Penn State and Joe Paul arriving for a matchup with the number one team in the nation, the Ohio State Buckeyes, number one in the BCS as well, and looking to stay there. That's at 8 o'clock tonight. 8 o'clock tonight from Happy Valley, back on the Big Ten in Ohio State. Last time they lost in the regular season was at Happy Valley in 05. Growth, he carries inside the 20. Lutris knocked him down at the 19. Yeah, no doubt you got to go here. You only have one timeout left. They're down by a touchdown. Jim Levitt's going to put the game on the line, go for it on fourth down. I like the call. After burning the last timeout, South Florida down to one timeout. Three receivers to the near side, two to the far. Grothy looking that way over the middle. Got a man. First down at the 10. Carlton Mitchell with the catch, and it's a big one to keep the drive alive. Well, this is an exceptional play with the game on the line. Mitchell's going to drive and then come inside on the dig route. And this is a tight window for Grothy. How about the timing and leading him inside? That's a beautiful play from the pocket. Defense may have jumped. Flags on the play. Grothy goes down behind the line of scrimmage. Been a great look in this second half at what uh, what the sophomore can do offensively running the show. Cody Brown, the defensive end, I think was in the neutral Outside, zone. Number 50 on the defense. Yeah. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. You know, but David, impressive because after a tough first half, he didn't have much going on at all. He had 40 yards in the air. He had a pick. Growth he did. He didn't have a touchdown to come back and, and take this team down the field a number of times in the second half. Hey, with Matt Grothy on the New York Stock Exchange, first half I was selling. The you're, second you're back half on that number. Huh? Get in there and buy, buy, buy. Williams. Grothy keeps it down to the two. So he fakes to Williams. Half the defense goes with him. Cody Brown, who just jumped, stayed right with Grothy. A zone read play by Grothy. Nothing wrong in the play call. With the game on the line down here inside the five yard line, keeping the ball in the hands of Matt Grothy. What a ball game. Under two minutes. First place in the Big East on the line. The rankings on the line. Keep it on the ground, fighting their way to the line. That's it. The defense for UConn, awfully tough. Classic full house backfield. Looked like Ryan Hennigan denying at the goal line. Grothy going to keep it, nowhere to go. Hand in, he's going to lose all the way back to the 13. Greg Robinson Jr. got there first. He had some friends along with him, though. 
huge play defensively. This was a naked bootleg. Let's go ahead and freeze it right here and watch the defenders stay at home. And Matt Grothy does not like what he sees. You count on that naked coming outside and seeing the defenders get sucked up towards the line of scrimmage and in towards the center where the ball was snapped. I mean, that is not a comfortable sight, Terry Gannon, to see those two defenders staying at home. They burned their last time out. So, South Florida, this is it. I mean, it's a minute left anyway, but fourth and goal coming up. Etchell trying to get everybody up out of their seats here in Rentschler Field. And uh, what's tough here, too, is it was a big loss. I mean, the ball comes all the way out outside the 11-yard line, and it takes away some of your play-action threat. And this is going to have to be Grothy basically dropping back and trying to find an open receiver. Four wide. Season could be on the line on this play. Grothy. End zone. Incomplete. UConn takes over. Coaches get into media conferences after the game. They like to put it all in a nutshell. Two times on the final two drives, South Florida inside the UConn five yard line, they come away with three points. It was a difference in this football game. Under a minute, Lorenz into a knee. No timeouts remaining for South Florida. It is time to gather in the troops and say, another job well done. That's all the reaction. He told us he's having more fun this year than he's ever had as a head coach. Why wouldn't he? Seven and one. A UConn. You got to be kidding me. And a, and a well played fourth down by the Husky secondary collapsing in the end zone. Grothy trying to hit the corner route. It just wasn't there. Tried to drop it into the corner of the end zone, but really no shot to hit that ball. How about this string of three games? Louisville, South Florida, and then Rutgers next week. They all get to watch them here. Edsel. UConn, the Huskies, Levitt. Tough loss. Two straight for the Bulls, but I mean, just an amazing run here to 3-0. and Go to Huskies in Big East play. They are atop the standings. There you Chevrolet. Players of the game, Matt Grothy and Andre Dixon, in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund as we send it down to Quinn. It was on your chest this week. What was most impressive about the way your kids reacted today? I thought we just played hard. You know, there was some adversity that set in. Never lost our poise. Just hung in there to the very end. We told them all week long it was going to be a championship bout. And we had to slug it out for 15 rounds. And we took enough shots. We went down a couple times, but we ended up on our feet and we got a hell of a victory. You Pardon my language, sorry. You hung in there, that, that bootleg on third down. What happened on that play? The guy coming off the edge did his job. You know, and sometimes we don't do our job all the time, but thank the Lord that we did our job on that. You talk about chemistry all the time. We saw it here today. Terry, back to you. Went. thank you very much. And Edsel uh, with a Husky team that's now moved to seven and what you shake your head at that 23 number 23 and moving up David unbelievable unbelievable and the Big East continues to be just a hotbed for upsets who would think UConn undefeated sitting atop the conference UConn wins at 22 15 for our entire crew I'm Terry again and don't forget Saturday Night Football on ABC Ohio State Penn State from Happy Valley at 8 Eastern good night everybody from Connecticut This has been a special presentation of ESPN on ABC.